I don't think I got enough for him this week. Ain't got no singer. You got a song in your heart? <laughs> I had something in my head. <laughs> hey man, <laughs> you got one? I it's gone. <laughs> hey, you ready? I, I ain't never stole him. At least nothing. But told my son and gave my phone. <laughs> Man, get out of here, Cam, get that back. Yeah. 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 What? I'm in this, been turning up with her. The girl around us and she loving her. If we don't know you, don't go close to her. If you with your guy, let me hear you say what? Good afternoon, good evening, good night. This is season five, episode 39 of the Reed Talk and Listen podcast. I'm your host, Nick Reed, along with my brother and co-host, Trey Reed. Killer Cam on the ones and twos tonight. How you doing today, man? Pretty good. Trying to get his AC rolling real quick before we get started. Got to get up? some AC going because when we start, I promise you, it never gets that hot in this room until we start, <laughs> until we start talking. I'll be sweating over here, bro. Dude, man, I I got this Google thing now, and it, when I'm home, when I'm leaving the house, it 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 go it, it lets itself know that no one's here, so it goes down to like the comfortable temp. Mm. And then shoot, when I get ready to, when I get back, when I get home, or when I get like right around the corner, it senses that I'm. It knows the connection kicks up, and boom, Jugga cuts on walk in the house, and welcome, Mister Reed. No, I like that one song, Let It Bang, Let It Bang, I Let It Bang all day. Just let it bang, cause bro, ain't nothing worse than coming home from being hot. Do I That's over with. <laughs> no boy, no. Walk in, think something wrong. We got a lot to get to tonight. All right, we got a lot to get to tonight. Uh, talking about some recruitment, uh, big thing in the world right now, big thing, especially where we come from, the hotbed, probably the best football in the country, uh, I believe. You know, uh, right here in East Texas region, a lot of people get recruited. You know what I'm saying? Stuff like that. Uh, so we got a lot of stuff to get to tonight. We're going to get to it, man. Uh, but we told y'all the guest was coming back. And then now we had to get it back. We already had him on the show before, uh, but we're going to run it back with my guy, a.k.a. Big Pressure, Trey Carson, man. Uh, great athlete, great father, great husband, great coach, and also a great author. All right? So y'all got to make sure y'all check this guy out, man. But uh, we're going to bring him to the show, man. Give us some hand clap. Hey, I can't hear him. I thought Cam had it. I thought Cam had it. <laughs> What's up, man? What's good? <laughs> What's good? What's good? Not much, man. Appreciate you, first of all, for coming back, running the back with us, man, over here on the Reed Talk and Listen podcast. Man, I appreciate y'all having me, man. You know, it's... I was on when somebody wanted me on their podcast to talk and give game and knowledge. So I appreciate y'all having me on here, man. Most definitely, man. Most definitely. Had to run it back, man. Uh, but before we hop in everything, man, just what's going on? What's new with you? Man, nothing much, man. Nothing really. You know, I'm just taking it day by day. Uh, been, uh, I got out of coaching, been doing some training. So that's what's new for me, doing some skill and drill training, training with kids. So. Still working with the game and kids who want to learn and, you know, get better. But that's about it for me. Oh, yeah, man. Passing the game down to the youth, man. That's man. something that a lot of us didn't or didn't have. Someone that was there, there to just, you know, pass it down to us, man. And, right. and you giving it to the youth and giving your knowledge and passing it on is, man, big things, man. Big things. Man, I always tell people if you, if you, if you, if you don't, if you don't give from the game, you stole from the game. That's how I feel from it. Yep. That's how big I feel about it. Big facts. It's always a good thing to give game, man, and especially uh, in the training sense. It's a little bit different than coaching. Uh, it's right, a little right. bit more personal, you know, with each with each person, especially in those one on one sessions and stuff like that. Right, because you, know? you got kids that that they I'm I'm locked in. I want to get better. That's what I want to do. I want to mm-hmm. be here. Versus when you coaching in the school, you got some kids that's parents making them play. I'm just playing because my buddy here. So you got to coach everybody, and these guys ain't ain't as locked in because they. You know, they ain't doing it for the reason that you think that people should all be doing it for versus when you're training them. These kids are coming in. They hungry. They want to get better. They want to put the work in. So, I don't know. You know, that's the way I, I that's the way I, I view it. Most definitely, man. We love to see it. We love to see it. Trey, 
we've been seeing you on Instagram again, going crazy uh, with the Dreaded Archer, man. What you what you been up to, man? Not much, man. Just recording shows, um, getting ready for the hunt season. Been uh, working with Rex, trying to figure out, you know, different, you know, walking spots that he can go to down in Arkansas. And then he's helping me find different spots in South Dakota. It was going to be the best location to put a stand and all that. And pretty much it, man. You know, working on a, a big project. I think you already know what it is, but I got to keep it a rest. You know, big project coming soon. Um, and uh, that's pretty much it, man. Got a couple road shows coming up and that's it you know what I'm saying? It, it's it's season now so yeah it's pretty it's time to all, all the podcasts gonna wind down and i'm gonna be in the woods all you know every day all day yeah, yeah. Uh, unfortunately for me uh i have not even i can't even say this publicly i don't think i don't i don't even know why i can say this publicly i haven't even driven out to the farm this season yet not have i have not just i have i not hunted I haven't even driven out there. Mm. It's 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 tough for me right now. I feel ashamed about it. But hey, we gonna get there, man. We running up the podcast stuff. The media is going nuts. Uh, need my tracking numbers, Trey. Right? <laughs> Stop. I told him about that too. I told him about that. I texted him and said, "Hey, you write those people's names down because they're gonna be coming for you in the comments." I got a <laughs> I, got, I got a I got a whole bunch of stuff coming in. It's all coming in. Hey, it's, a, it's a one man show. I, I make all my own stuff. So. <laughs> hey, I feel it. Man. I feel it. But yeah, I'm a little ashamed uh, that I haven't gotten out there. But hey, we gonna get there, man. Hey, if you tuned into the podcast right now, we appreciate you for being here. Uh, make sure you hit that like button, that share button. If you're on the YouTube tonight, hit that subscribe button over there, notification bell. Or anytime we go live, any content we post, any reels, any shorts, you can get that. And then also get over to the Instagram at. The RTL podcast, man. Make sure y'all get over there and run those pages up. We appreciate everybody uh, for tuning in tonight. You are now tuned in to the RTL podcast. The recruitment handbook. Y'all see the name of the episode on the show, man. Um, that's what we're going to try to do tonight. We're going to try to give away as much game uh, from people who've been through the recruitment process and things we could have done, we should have done, you should be doing because you're going to learn it here tonight. Uh, that's kind of what we're gonna try to put that put it out there on the table. But uh, we're gonna just pop it off with just walk through your recruitment process a little bit, man. Uh, how it was for you coming out of here back in 2011? Oh uh, man, for me, my recruitment process it started off kind of slow, but uh, once it picked up, it picked up. I'm trying to remember back. I uh, I think Quest went to Wyoming, and uh, after my junior season. They offered me my first scholarship, and uh, man, I just made a lot of copies of my highlight tape and put it on DVD. Me and my mom would go down to the post office and mail it to the facilities. And then once I learned how to put it on YouTube, I would just email it to coaches all day long while I was in class. Had a computer class, Mr. Matt Fry. I think he uh, works at Pleasant Grove now. And uh, man, I would sit there and email that highlight tape all day long. That's your resume. Hey, right. Because hey, right. <laughs> I, I knew what you know, I was one of those kids that kind of knew what I wanted out of it early. So I wasn't I wasn't going to wait on the coaches to do this or wait on them to come find me. You know how people say if they good, they'll find you. I was going to make sure they found me. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm going to put it right there in your face. Some and, and, you know, some schools never responded. And but I, I didn't I didn't let that, you know, waver my confidence at all. But. Man, I remember I sent it to, I sent my tape to uh, the University of Minnesota. I sent it to the running back coach. Yeah. And as soon as I sent it, probably five minutes later, he called me and they offered me a scholarship, like right, right there on the spot. Like, that. so yeah. I was like, man, I, I, you know, it's some instant gratification. You know, like some of this stuff really is worth it's getting there. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So I, I try to give as much game as I can. You know, people. <clears throat> I see people say or they'll ask me, man, what uh well, the coaches ain't helping me, da 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 you can, and don't get me wrong, you know, my coaches they 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 did what they did, but I never depended on it. Yeah. I never depended on it. I I, I putting the groundwork in and sending it out myself. Sending it out myself. I went I, I didn't wait on them not one bit. And these kids, they know how to use the computers and use huddle and make highlights and do all that. So I mean you you don't need a coach to 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 put your best plays together. You might want to 
let them look over it and make sure you you got some good tape on it. But yeah, you don't need them to do that, <laughs> you know. So exactly. that's what I just try to tell them, man. Don't wait on nobody. Put put your tape together. You know where your best plays are. Put them put them together, and you ain't gotta wait on no coach to do that. <laughs> it's definitely different in twenty twenty three, right? Because even 2011, 2010, Troy, you came out 07. Oh, uh, oh my bad. I ain't trying to put you up there. But yeah, you, you came out in 08. Yeah. So it, it, we didn't have as much access to it because they right. got it right here now. Like you right. walking around with your tape. Right. You know what I'm saying? So that's where, in that aspect, I think they, they have a much easier road. Man, they, uh, got, they, got, they got Twitter. They got. They, man, they got so much stuff, man. I, I, I. It's it's crazy. Like I'm I'm watching these kids. They you can put it on your you put your huddle on your Twitter. You can put your highlight tape on your Twitter. You can you can man. You just so it's just so much easier. You can DM it right to a coach right off the internet, and it go right to his phone. He can check you out, and within thirty seconds. Nope. I was you know? uh, Twitter were just really popping off back in 2012 like that, and I was I was messaging players, which you That's, wasn't supposed to do that, but I, you know what I'm saying. I was messaging yeah. players, and hey, the player to- might not ever hit me, but the coach would hit me. Or you know what I'm saying? saying. What that's, we know, so that's what I'm saying. You gotta go get it. Like when you really want it for real, you you'll go get it. You'll go get it. And we, I didn't have it, man. I get the tape Monday morning from the coaches when I got to school. Man, I it, it was on like a. I got them in there. Matter of fact, I, I wish I would have brought them out. But on a little on a little uh little the tape little, cam, like that, the little camcorder tapes. You know what I'm talking about. I know. <laughs> then they had this little machine and then it, and it, and they ripped it off the uh, tape and put it on the computer. Man, I do that every Monday. Every Monday, I got my best clips. They are already loaded up and ready to go. Ready to roll. <laughs> ready to roll. See, I see y'all had it good. Yeah. When I was coming out, social media was just getting started. Matter of fact, Facebook was only for college students. So mm-hmm. the, only, the only way you could get on Facebook was if you had a college email address. Mm-hmm. So you had to like try to make one up. And then, like, that's how I found out. And I started talking to guys from Navy and and, uh, and, uh, and Army about the, you know, which one is better. Was through mm-hmm. making me a, a fake. Uh, uh, well, actually, it wasn't fake. I had a, I took a class at TC and they gave me an email address. Email so like address. I was a student. So I was I'm get on Facebook and I'm talking to them and that's kind of when it all started. You know, being able to contact these guys through social media because the NCAA didn't have rules against it yet because it wasn't it wasn't a it, thing. Right. It and was uh, a loophole. It was a secret loophole. Like coaches nope. would hit you up on Facebook or Twitter and they could message you all day long on there because it, they they. You know, like you said, they didn't have any restrictions on it at the time. But yeah, man, these kids, man, you, and, and like you said, see what he did? Use his college email, start hitting guys up, bro. You gotta, you gotta go get gotta it. Go get you it. Gotta get out there. You, you can't wait on nobody, man. Exactly. When you put out, you put up a post, and you were saying, you know, at this point in the season, if you ain't got a mid-season highlight, what what are you really doing, man? So kind of go into that a little bit, man. What what was you what was you getting at right there, man? Because uh, you know, I and. I pay attention to the local high school scene. I, I watch these kids' social media to see who's posting, who's active, and who's 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 putting their stuff out there. So I'm I wasn't seeing a whole bunch of midseason highlights. So I, I made the post in like at this point, you should have a midseason highlight tape, and it should be ready to go with your with your best plays at the beginning. The first two minutes should be your best plays, and it should be ready to go sending it out to all the coaches you know around the world so, so that's they that's basically doing. what i was saying yeah yeah because what what I, do you think I, what do you think is the whole back why do you think the kids nowadays with more access to social media more access mm-hmm. to their tape more access to anything that has to do you know with with direct contact with these colleges uh why do you think that they're more lackadaisical about getting tapes out and stuff like that man i think it's they just take they take it for granted, you know, because they use they use social media for so much other stuff instead of the right stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I think I think them having the easy access to it, they don't realize like I could be using this, you know. I could be using this. Yeah, coach. Uh, he said, Coach Carson, you know, uh, our struggles with kids highlight taste these days. Coaches have to make sure it's a highlight. Right. That's why I said. Oh, yeah. That's why I said I, I, I'm, I'm, I would, I make it, and then I would run it by my coach. But I'm not waiting on my coach to make it for me. Exactly. That's why I said. So I'm, I will make it, and then I'm gonna run it by the coach because that takes the heart. So because the coaches have a million things to do. That's that's exactly. number one. 
So they can't sit up and make a highlight tape for every single kid on the team, even though these days they have things like huddle assist. So you can break huddle assist down by, okay, number nine, I can go look at all his runs for the game. He This this kid had uh, 20 carries. I can look at all, all 20 of his carries. Okay, where are the 20 plus runs at? You got 20 plus runs or 20 plus receptions. Like it's easy to do. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. yeah. The coaches have a million things to do. So the kid, if a kid brings you a highlight tape, at least you can do is run, look at it for five minutes out your time and say, this is a highlight tape. This is a highlight. This is not, you know, because they have already put the clips together for you. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I ask exactly. you to go through there and drag and do it themselves. So, and that's you know, why I've always, go ahead, Trey. I'm going to say, I know when I saw that post, one thing that said to me, you said, put your best plays in the first two minutes. And, yeah, a, lot, I, and a lot of kids who don't, if you never sat in a, a, a room with a with a college coach and watch like a highlight tape because I know when it was like when I was at Navy, we would always sit. You know, we had nothing to do, go up there and with the coaches and they watching highlight tape. They literally watched the first minute and a half, two minutes. That's it. I on to the next one. That's and it. They, and they've already got the evaluation on you. So if you put in, you know, you got you know some mid plays here, some highlights and some mid. You no, know, you won't. It's the build up. They be trying to build up. I yeah. feel like now when I watch the highlight tape, and, hey. and that's gonna make that's gonna make me turn it off. Exactly. Just I don't want to see. That, I don't want to see that five yard run. I don't want to see that catch and tackle. No, nah, right. I want to see that. And then kids have like a a long intro. Like, are you walking out and doing this and doing it? Man, they don't want to see that, man. <laughs> I'm just being real with you. They don't want to see that. Now that 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 highlight tape, that's for YouTube. You put that yeah. on YouTube. But the one yeah, you yeah, send yeah. to these coaches. I don't, I don't want to see that long. Yeah, I don't want to see that long. No they want to see you. They want to see you because these days on Huddle, you can highlight where you at, highlight where you at, and the play go. Yeah, let's that's see. It. Let's see. Let's see. Yeah. Ain't, ain't, ain't no yeah. way because I, I used to be like, yeah, I ain't going to watch it all. They're like, no, nah, we don't watch nah. all. We, we can't watch time. Right. There's no, not, not, not enough time in the day to watch it all. You Bro. can't. Like, I had a lot of coaches tell me, though. Minutes. When I was emailing coaches and stuff back then, I had a lot of coaches tell me, send me five plays. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? they weren't saying send me your tape. They were saying mm. send me five plays. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Send me a yeah. couple plays. Send me a few plays. Send okay. me five plays. Okay, now if you can grab their attention in them five plays, they might watch. They might watch <laughs> some more. If you grab their attention in the next two minutes, then next thing you know, uh, they might watch a little bit more, and then they they'll probably contact your school and ask your coach for some game film. That's, that's, that's how it's gonna go. Because it, like, it's, it's a sales pitch. It's, that's yeah. all it is. Yeah, that's like like I'm, I'm 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 in sales. So like yeah. when you when you have a meeting and you're trying to get something in, your first thirty seconds you got to hit them with the meeting. Ooh, you got to grab them. And, gotta grab them. and once you once you hook them, then I, they might go watch the rest. But you need that that first thirty seconds to a minute. You gotta you gotta set the bait and hook them. Exactly. Yep. Hey, the plays I sent SMU did not grab their attention. The five five plays I sent to them, they did not offer me. They offer me off ten somebody else tape, and me on they tape. Running yeah. around. No, that can happen too. That can happen so too. So you can, uh, you know, so you gotta put the. I'm talking about your five absolute best plays need to be the first, the first five plays they see. Your yep. absolute best play. Yep. Or, or if you talk to some, uh, if you talk to the scouts, uh, like like from my junior year to my senior, year, the this college is what they biggest concern was my top end speed, right? So my first, uh, my mid season highlight my senior. year, Bunch of long runs showing top end speed. What they want to see? Exactly. You gotta you got get that, to. that feedback. You got to, and I think um, a lot of kids these days is also they they caught up in the glitz and the glam. You know yeah. what I'm saying? They caught they caught up in you know, oh I had this one catch where I, I might have jumped up and caught it, but it's a five yard catch. Yeah, that's not a you know highlight. What I'm saying? That's not a highlight. It's not a highlight. You need to be that's breaking somebody down and getting gone. Exactly. They want Putting points on the board, and and, and 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 most of the problem is, uh, man, these kids don't watch ESPN Top Ten Sports Center. They don't know what a highlight is for real. <laughs> it's gone. Yeah, that that, yeah. that got something to do with it too. Go um, watch that, man. They'll show you what a highlight is. If your play looks something like what you just seen on TV, you know it's a highlight. That's what you're <laughs> you don't see those six yard runs on there, five yard catch. <laughs> no, no. Zero. And then you also said, uh, you know, if you think your kid is a Division One athlete, get mm-hmm. on get on the computer and look at some D one athletes, and look then look at, the at look at your kid. Yeah, look at the roster. So, so don't get me wrong, they're going to be, 
you, you, you're gonna have your outliers, right? You're gonna have your, your kids that, yeah, that, yeah. that, that, that the smaller kids that make it, but nine times out of ten, bro, and man, whether it's fair or not, if you're if you're not the right size, it's just not gonna recruit you, bro. It's that's just it. that's just that's just how it goes, like that's just how right. it goes. So, like, it ain't got nothing to do with that's just how it is, man. Like, that's just the reality. Right. You look on the you can look on Texas and then roster, they probably they might got two undersized guys, right. They might got two undersized guys, but that's just what it is, man. I ain't, I'm not saying it's it's right, but that's the that truth. undersized guy that, probably does mean. something. That undersized guy hey, does I, one thing better than I, anybody else can do. I guarantee you. I guarantee you. <laughs> I guarantee you. And I think yep. uh, that might be the downfall of a lot of the athletes as well. Is that everybody? You might you, you might mute it. No, but what he's saying is a, a lot of guys. Yeah, every, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Everybody wants Alabama. Everybody wants Texas A&M. You know, everybody wants this Power Five. Everybody wants that, and nobody. And, and, and as parents, nobody wants to accept that my child is not that. Guess what? It ain't nothing wrong with going to Henderson State and playing no, for four years. Exactly, bro. I, if I, you I, gonna play, and, and I tell people this because, bro, if you if you go where you gonna play at, that's right. It. Cause, cause you, and you gotta know yourself, and you gotta know your kid. If my kid is going to college to play football, cause let's be honest, all the kids are not going to college to get a, further their education and graduate. They're not doing mm-hmm. that, bro. It's some kids that are there to play football. So you going you can't go to a school, even even the kids that you may have an offer from Texas A and M. But if you are gonna go there and they telling you you gonna red shirt and you probably not gonna play and you are there to play football, think about think about how that year gonna go for you it's that you got a red shirt. It's bro, you gonna you you gonna quit and, and transfer like bro, you you are that you going to college to play football. So <laughs> yeah. I'm not going somewhere where I'm gonna sit out and I can't play if I know I ain't if I know I'm going to play football. Exactly. Like, you know what I'm saying? If I'm going to get my education and you know I'm gonna work my way, I know I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna work my way on the field some kind of way. Da, da, da. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna go and maybe I, if I get red shirt, I ain't tripping. But if I know I'm going to play, I'm gonna go somewhere where I can play. You know what I mean? That's <laughs> that's what you should do. Hey, and, right. and, it, and it's funny you say that because some people think like, oh, well, no, they're going to that school because it's got good academics. No, they're no. all on that football team. I promise you, I didn't play with them. You didn't play yes. with them. Nick. Yes. With them. They are there for football. They are there to yeah. play football. The coaches literally <laughs> got to drag them to class. They, they, exactly. they are. It's right, all you and, see. And, and guess what? I'm not saying there's something wrong with it because everybody. I mean. School is not everybody's thing, you know. No. It's, it's not everybody's thing. In reality, that school brought you there to play football. To play football. Because, I, I can tell you, there are some people. Because if play you with. couldn't play football, you wouldn't be there. <laughs> you wouldn't be there. Thank you. <laughs> if you didn't play, you was not getting in this joker at you all. You weren't getting in, bro. So, that's what I be saying. So if you, if your goal is to, to play college football, then go play college football. Exactly. And I, th- and, and, pushing your, and I think pushing your kid on the right path. Uh, other than living on false hope, you know what I'm saying? It's the right thing because if you if you aiming, if you I'm not saying aim low because and, it, and it's, and it's okay to it. it's okay to aim for the it's exactly. okay to aim for that exactly. But, but if, if you go fall short, play here, you got to be able to pivot exactly. That's I, if I know for sure, I know for sure I can say I know for sure I can play in the GAC. Now, I got that locked down. I know I'm that kind of player. You know right. what I'm saying? Then what if, if the Bamba don't come, if the if the AM don't come, okay, we already knew this. We we, we really above that's fine. Oh, I go I go over here and play. Exactly. I go over here and play. That's and that's just the thing, bro. It's nothing wrong. It's nothing wrong with going to division two school, division three, NIA, NI, uh NIA, what how you say it? NI, NAI. Yeah, NAI. NAI. Yeah. It's nothing wrong with it. It's nothing wrong with it. Go where you can play. Go where you can play. Yeah. Because I, I, we've always said everybody can't play everywhere, but you can play somewhere. You can play like, somewhere. I don't care if you're going to the, the Morningside uh, Juco in Sioux yeah. City, Iowa. You can play I somewhere. I played there two years, and they're in Nebraska, and they're, they're after them two years. Hey, you can go play somewhere. And I guarantee I guarantee the kids that go to ETBU and play their four years have more fun than a guy just – just trying to end up somewhere, you know what I mean? Like you trying to, you trying to go somewhere that that that's beyond your reach. Exactly. Came and Farmer said, "Dudes at the GAC getting them shots too." You put up, yeah. Oh yeah. Once you get to college, 
you in college. You, you don't in matter. college. You, you, you in college. college. You get to college yeah. You in college. So you if you can go ball, and if you gonna go ball in the GAC, go ball in the GAC. Ain't nothing. Okay. Ain't nobody hate, or they shouldn't be hating on you or whatever for going to go ball in the GAC. Go ball. You gonna get a chance. Yeah, uh, right it. after Texas Canada, uh, TJ Cole. Come on, that's recent times. Yeah, you gonna on. get a shot. You know he balled out, and I guarantee you, I guarantee you, he 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 had more fun playing where he played at than some guys that went to a bigger school and and, and never played. Never played. <laughs> yep. And never played. That's gonna get them. So for real. As a parent, so what should the parent be looking for as well? So I want to touch on this too. What should parents be looking for when they going and sitting down uh, in these in these meeting rooms, and, and they got people coming out to the schools and talking to their kids and stuff like that? What should these parents? Be Man, I think you just, for one, don't get overwhelmed, right? And 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 look for like flaws in in the coach's character. Like some some of these coaches gonna come to your living room and lie to you about mm. your kid and, and say that he gonna come here and play and do this and do that just to get the kid there. And and, and some some of them gonna lie to you, and then some of them really. And then you got situation where the kid don't end up being as good as y'all thought he was, right? So then you thought the coach lied to you, but nah, really, little Johnny really just ain't like that for real. He probably shouldn't have went to. Or, then, or, or got there and wasn't doing what he's supposed to be doing. Right, right. Exactly. So it's, right, right. So, so you know, because people like to say, uh, you know, I know my kid, da, 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 man, you don't know them kids when they outside of your eyesight. Outside of your reach, you would like to think he was coming doing everything he was supposed to do, but he he late there every meeting, he late there every exactly. workout, he lasts in the sprints. That stuff matter, it's bro. It's a lot getting matter. on the field and at the next level. It's, it's not, way it's more than lie, just dog. exactly way more than just your ability. Which we're gonna mm -hmm. get to that in a second about talking about ability, but it's it's so many more factors that come into it because you grow now. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, nope. In high school, it was just put the pads on, come out there. You know what I'm saying? You probably if you if you had the D1 level, you was probably bigger than everybody already. You faster, probably bigger, stronger. faster, stronger. Come on. You gonna, they can roll the ball out there. You gonna you gonna kill them all. It's easy. <laughs> you, you just showed up. You just showed up. Yeah, you just, just showed up. up. It's easy. But oh, hey, the means uh treatment if you hurt, if, if you got a little banged up and you ain't go to treatment, then you get out there practicing, you limping around. It's oh, oh yeah, oh it's yeah. Oh, it's That's the thing people don't understand, man. And and, and, and Man, for a kid to be ready to 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 take on a D1 life, for a kid to be ready to go perform at a D1 school, I think they gotta have D1 parents, bro. Like oh, yeah. your parent, your parents mm -hmm. gotta make sure that you 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 are structured. Like like you come from a structured background. They used to making you get up and be on time, do your homework, hold your grades to a certain. You know, man, that you gotta have D1 parents, bro. First, first. So that way, when you get to school. I'm used to, I'm used to having to get up and go do this. I'm used to having responsibility, bro. Because you can't, you know, these days parents make so many excuses for kids. And I, I can speak on it now. I'm not a coach no more, so I can speak on it. You got, <laughs> for real, bro. You got parents. Oh, uh, Lejeune got a doctor's appointment. Yeah. He, he got to go to the dentist. He got to. Man, this kid went to the dentist four times this month. How many cabinets <laughs> do he got? <laughs> yeah. checking, checking kids out of school, you doing it, man. Come on, bro. So when they get to when they get to school, when they get to college, they don't know how to uh fight through the hard part. Cause a kid, a kid, uh oh, man, it's it's hot outside today. I'm finna call my mom at lunch to tell her come give me. So I won't have to go to practice after school. <laughs> Ain't nobody calling college. No, uh, miss if you want. To. <laughs> All right. Yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah, you gonna find yourself in that portal. You're going to be in the hey, dorm room, one of them away games. You're going to be in the hey, dorm room. Hey, listen, that's something people don't know about. When you don't make that travel squad in oh. college, you don't get to go to all the games and no. stand on the sideline and wave the towel. You don't get to no. do that. That's only at home. There's some kids on scholarship that get left at home and they didn't get, get to go to the game. For sure. Hey, I promise you right now. I promise you right now. My very first ever away game. I did not know nothing about it. You know what I'm saying? I didn't know nothing about that. I was hurt. I'm thinking, see, I'm getting ready. I'm, hey, why ain't got no bag? Why ain't no bag in my uh, Man, in my you life? heard me. You heard me. Boy, I, 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 I transferred to AM and I'm, I got a red shirt. I got to sit out. 
because uh you know back then when you transfer you got to sit out mm-hmm. that was that was the rule you had to sit out a year so and then the team load up get about to go on the first road trip going to la tech and i'm thinking i'm man where my bag at? i don't, gotta, I don't yeah. get one of them i don't get one of them nice uh travel suits they got dang what what i'm gonna do why they gone you gotta stay at home, bro. Hey, and you I swear, to like, the, hey, then weekend it seemed like ain't nobody Ooh, on campus. Ain't, 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 ain't nobody. Dry. Ain't nothing going it's, on. Hey, that weekend, so <laughs> that weekend so long. Oh, 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 let me tell you what we used to do. Even at, we did this at Oregon and we did it at um and Uh, the guys who ain't playing in the game Friday, they gotta play in the toilet bowl. It's a scrimmage from mm-hmm. all the guys that's not gonna play tomorrow mm-hmm. and Saturday. It's a big scrimmage. Everybody, finna, it's a live scrimmage. Boy, don't, 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 don't you know how low they make you feel? Bro, ours is on Sunday. Everybody else off. <laughs> Every, ours is on ooh. Sunday, bro. Everybody else off. And everybody who, a, who ain't play. Got a scrimmage. It's live. Scr- yep. Live. So, we'll see, hey, on see, Sunday. so, see, I, I was a little lucky. So, when we, if you didn't make the travel squad at Navy, you played on, you played Friday. No, you played Thursday. And mm-hmm. it would be a, what you call it. No, it was Friday. You played Friday. And it'd be like what you call it. Um, we have like JUCOs or like um, little, little D three schools come in. Oh, see, see y'all's so y'all get we, y'all got to play against somebody. Yeah, we, we, yeah, we got we got to play against somebody. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and then, yeah. but see, also, I didn't. I, so I didn't go straight to the academy. I went to the prep school in Rhode Island. So you got to, it's basically like the 13th grade. So it don't count towards eligibility. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And what you call it? So we would play like Lackawanna Community College. We play uh, Yale's JV, Princeton's mm-hmm. JV, which I didn't know college had JV teams. Mm-hmm. But we played them, and so you get that year. And then say so if you didn't make the bus, you was playing. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know Mer- Maryland Bowie Community College. Well, to beat their ass. <laughs> 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 yeah, like but, but but here's the kicker: if you shined in that game. You got to make the bus. You, you got. Hey, okay. Oh uh, okay. yeah. So y'all out there okay. playing for chips. Okay. Yeah, okay. Chips. <laughs> nah, you out there playing. Hey, boy. And also, if you only played like three or four snaps, don't think you weren't finna be out there on oh, Sunday. Might- oh, I'm telling you. <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you. So you I'm might go out there and get banged up from your three or four snaps. You playing hey, Sunday? Hey, you better know that. That's the thing they don't tell you about college it's football. Toilet bowl. <laughs> Toilet oh, yeah, got toilet bro. bowl. That's the same thing we call it. Toilet bowl. Toilet bowl. I said, man, <laughs> come on, man. You're full of walk on scholarship guys who ain't performing. Uh, people who transfer in. That's, that's where you see the tap out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's yeah, where you see you the got, tap out. You got a five star recruit. He, this big name guy, he don't want to play in that. He don't want to play in that. Because exactly. it, it's, it's hard to talk yeah. to your friends back home. Hey, man, you, you playing this week? I look no, on. I, I, mean, I ain't see you on the side. Hey, t- <laughs> and hey, I, I, I will admit it. I'd be like, man, coach tripping. That's right. That's right. That was, man, coach tripping. Man, they talking about something. Man, I got to see at the house, man. Hey, bro, look, 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 it's me right here. I, I was there. You ain't see me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, man. Oh, oh man. But let's talk about some mobility, man. Uh, obviously, size. You can't. You, whatever size you are, that's the size you're gonna be, man. Right. Oh, but I, I think I see nowadays. I see uh, less progression. I feel like uh, even like the past ten years, I would see a guy as a freshman or a sophomore come on the scene, and then by his senior year, he he blowing he blowing everybody out the water like he's supposed to be. Mm-hmm. And now I feel like I see a guy bust out in his freshman sophomore year, and and that's 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 as good as he gonna be. He's that's, that, he that's what he gonna give you till he is senior. Uh, yeah. So what, what what you think? What's the thing going on right there? Man, I think uh, I don't know because I feel like I've always seen that kind of like you see some, you see some kids like that super freaks in the eighth grade, you know, and and then they end up being the same athlete from the eighth grade on to their senior year, and then you see some guys who are late bloomers, who who was okay athletes, or you know who who maybe this kid maybe he was good at all sports, but his athleticism ain't caught up yet. You know, so I, I think I think that's always been around. Uh, I, I can't say uh, why that why that happens like that. I I, I don't know, but uh, man, I think you just can't get lax. Like you got to keep working. Yeah. Okay, you got you got to keep working. I I remember I set a goal for myself, uh, and then each year I set a goal higher, 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 and and I know I would have to work 
to 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 achieve those goals. So that's yeah. you know, I, I think a lot of kids get they get it stuck in their head. Well, I'm coaches coaches are talking to me. I'm good enough now, and they hear that, well, they'll put the weight on you when you get there. And that's oh, yeah. true, that's true, they will, but mm -hmm. you want to be two steps ahead, you want to get there and be and already have the weight on you, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I tell kids, like, hey, when you talk to these coaches, ask them, hey, what size you guys want me at when I come in? Let me tell you, I, I, not to cut you off. Oh, yeah. I, th I, I, was, I, I just thought about this. The number one reason why I think some of these kids don't progress, they don't run track, bro. No, nobody run, runs track no more. They, mm. they don't run track. Nobody runs track. So the kids is the same speed he was as a freshman as he is when he has seen. Nobody runs track. Like, you don't yep. want to compete and run track and get fouled. So I ran track my whole high school career, whether I was running this time or that time. Coach D just made sure that my time was getting faster as the track season went on. So that means I'm getting faster. Yep. Yeah. That's that's what the kids don't understand. I don't care if, if you come out here and you run 11.8 and 100, and then by the end of track season you run 11.5, you got that much faster. It don't, yep. it, it don't matter that you're not running a 10, a 10 some or uh, uh, whatever the case may be. You you got faster. That's that's the thing. You got better. So, yep. I, none, man, none of the kids really run track like that, man. The star kids, they ain't running track. You know, what I'm saying? Exactly. you know, I I think uh, going to that track thing too. I you getting faster is definitely a major a major key and a major come uh, come out of running the track. But to me, you get fa you get faster every year, bro. Like you get you got better, you exactly. got better. Like there's no way you can be the same player if I got faster from my freshman sophomore to my junior. You know, he said, if I get faster, plays track. It ain't the same. That's not the same. You can't. You're not same. getting faster playing seven on seven, most likely. Right, and I, I yeah, think what man. he's saying is kids are ducking uh, track to play seven on seven because it's during that same same season, as yeah. you would say. Like so, during track season, you see some kids are going to play going to play seven on seven instead of running in a track meet on the weekend. But okay, so if I'm a school, if I'm UIL, I'm moving the track meets to Thursday then. Yep. All the track meets gonna be during the week. You ain't leave, you you. I ain't. Gonna, we don't have no Saturday track meets. The track meets are on Thursday. You are gonna run track, and then on the weekend, I don't care what you do. You can go fly and play seven on <laughs> seven, or do you know yeah. whatever. Hey, I just what, think I, you I know. can with your school because some of the, most of the seven on seven ain't with your school. You You're know right. what I'm saying? I, it's something different when you are competing with your school. Yeah, we all know that you'd have been picked up on a mm -hmm. team. You know, you know what I'm saying? Whatever. When you compete with your school, it's a different type of something going on inside of you right there. You trying, you know what I'm saying? Y'all out there trying a little bit harder, a little bit, a little bit different. So when you're doing that all throughout the year, when August roll back around, I'm 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 in full, I'm in full compete. I'm mm -hmm. in full, full compete mode. Ain't no turning it on me way through the season. Oh, I gotta get used to the helmet and heat and all and nothing. Cause I've been I, going. I've been competing year round. And we got so many one sport athletes now, it's crazy. That's right, and, and I and I don't know why, bro. I don't know why because it, it's not like when you when you specializing in a sport, it's not like it's gonna make you that much better at that one sport. Exactly. Like you, you still gonna have kids that roll out of you. Like man, it, you have a kid that's just playing straight basketball. You still gonna have football players that roll out of there and come in there and, and be better than you, and, 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 and be better than you. Exactly. That's just what it is, bro. That's just the reality. I don't see why kids play straight football either. Are you still gonna have some kids that play basketball and run track and still gonna roll out there and play football and still, exactly. still do what they? I mean, do. I mean, you, I don't, if you if you look back at it, most of the time, the best football players or the, or the 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 best kids that play sports normally they they rolled in from another sport and they came in yeah. all out exactly. and they rolled Man. on into another sport. Oh. There was always a couple a couple games late. Exactly. Bro, all the all the best players on the team play other sports. You don't have to be a star in the other sport. No, you that's just what, that's what I be trying to get people to realize. I'm not no. saying be a one sport athlete. Whatever I tell cats, focus on one sport. Yeah, if you a football player, focus on football. Right, don't be right. don't but be in there uh trying to go up there to Arkansas and train with Joe and all them. You you're not going nowhere to play basketball. You right. know what I'm saying? But when that season rolls around, you on the team. I'm competing. I'm competing. I'm competing. You. These kids got you got to learn how to compete and learn how to be a winner and a warrior and learn how to compete, bro. That's the exactly. thing. Like you, 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 I'm competing year round. Once you competing year round, like now I'm a competitor. Like it, it just built that it make it make you a dog, bro. It makes exactly, you a dog. Man. 
hit me, and I feel like, and that's why I say, like, play with your school because you, you can't, know. you can't get that with some random cats you don't know. No, no. And, 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 and listen, I ain't gonna. I, I'm gonna say this. I ain't against seven on seven because it, it give you exposure and kids get recruited from it. You know, I, I'm I'm not I, I'm not against it, but it's just you got to prioritize. You got to prioritize. Like if I if I already got if I already got thirty offers, twenty some offers, I'm not going to play no seven on seven no more. Bro. What, what am I going? I, it's no point of me doing it. <laughs> no point of me. I'm gonna make sure I'm getting better. So when I do go to where I'm going, they're gonna say, "Oh, he for real." Yep. That that was that was my biggest thing. I never wanted to show up somewhere and they say, "Oh, Trey ain't as good as as they say he was, or we thought he was gonna be." Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I, I never want to show up like that. I always want to show up and they say, "Oh, well, he he better than what we thought." Uh, he, he's he's you know advertised. Come on, exactly. he's as advertised or he better than what we thought. One of the two. Yep. That's that's what I was shooting for. Exactly. And I think maybe because I, I, I as media, I be taking the blame for a lot of this stuff. So I think sometimes the media I think that might be on us at th in this day and age um, that we are we that we up a kid if a kid got a little juice we gonna give it to him but you know but what I'm saying as a, that's, as a that's whole the name of the game though that's the name of the game like if you can get the if you just got a little a little ounce of talent but you got a media train behind you you can it, it, it's gonna it's gonna only get you so far but it's it's gonna get you there now you gonna have to yeah. do the work once you get there but you just gotta show just a, a little bit of glimpse and and, and you got. And, and we you see got, it. And we're seeing it yeah. now. You right. You got different. You got different type of people though. Some people, like the uh, the ball kid, right from Texas High. Yeah. He get. I, I think he see the juice and it turn him up some more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For real. You know what I mean? Yeah. Hold on. Hold on. It's a few. Uh, it's a few cats like that. Okay. I, my I've bad. But yeah, like like you see, he, he get the he, he get the juice and it turn him up more. Yeah, it's a few cats you know like that. It's a few cats like that. Um, but I see the majority. I think I see the majority. They, you know, what I'm saying they, a little bit of juice, and it's like, okay, I made it. You know what yeah. I'm saying? But I think yeah. that also got to do with, like you said, you got to have D1 parents. You do, bro. You got to yeah. have D1 parents. I know my mama was way D1 before I was because oh, I, I was a baseball player. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to go play baseball. What are you talking about? You know what I'm saying? I'm, that's what I, that's what I felt like. And then yeah, my mom, she wasn't playing. Oh, uh, hey, dude, my mom, she got the NCAA clearinghouse book, and she knew that joker from front to back. Oh, uh, see what I'm do, saying? We, we we can't do this. We can't do that. I right, we can do this. And then when the coaches come in, she she got she got a list of questions. Come she on. already knew what was going come on. on. See what I'm saying? Yeah, come on, sit on this dinner table. I I didn't make some hamburger helper. We gonna eat, and I got some questions <laughs> yeah, for you. I got some questions <laughs> for you. Yeah, for sure. Right, right for there. sure. For sure. Yeah. See, my my mom, she just made sure uh that I, I i was i was gonna be eligible to go because she made sure i made straight a's my i already made straight a's my whole life so she she made sure i was gonna be eligible to go and uh by quest going through it before me that, that helped her like get some hands-on training to see how it's supposed to go so man it's like i said your parents gotta be d1 first it is man hey, and that, that clearing house we didn't know nothing about the incident. Nothing, you, and, and see, I don't tell you, you, you and nobody you older, about that. Yeah, you the older brother, so you you don't know about it. So you you going through you going you run into it blind. But the fact that you went you went through it, when he come up and go through it, they already know what's going on. You know, your parents are already educated on it. Yeah, and that's another thing too. You gotta as much as they recruiting you, you know what I'm saying? You you recruiting them too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, okay, yeah. I want me to come here and do all this and that and that. Okay, well, I need to know such and such and such. Well, you know, whatever your demands are, or not necessarily demands, but well, yeah, really demands. Whatever your you demands are, you can't be scared to ask questions, man. You can't be scared to ask questions. If you if you unsure about some or uh, some uncertain to you, you need to know what the answer is before you sign your name on that dotted line, sign your life away because that's what you're doing. And look at the <laughs> roster. No exactly. one, I feel like kids ain't looking at the roster of who gotta look at, who are gotta look there. At no one, like, no one does that. Man, this is a quick story. I uh, signed a day, my senior year. You know, I, I signed with Oregon, right? So this is before I faxed my paperwork in. I, we get alert that uh, D. Anthony Thomas, the Black Mamba, he 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 signed with Oregon. He flipped from USC on signing day. Signed with Oregon. So I'm like, hold on. Coach told me I was gonna be the only running back that they bring in. Yeah. So do I need to flip and call Coach Petrino down there in Arkansas? Hold on, let me see what's going on. So I hit the hit up Coach Campbell. Like, hey, Coach. 
I thought you said I was gonna be he was like, don't worry, he, he he's like he's gonna be like a gadget player. And then he didn't lie to me, but it was just one of those things where you gotta hey, let me check this out. Let really? me check it out. It's a little different. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm gonna check it out. Because yeah. it's, it's definitely a business move because like you said it before yeah. the show, you the program make the player. Yeah. So if you right. if you go to a program and it's like, like for me, I'm a running back. I go to a program and they got eight running backs already there. And, and they bringing in three more? Hey, sh- I mean, hey, that depth chart looking a little slim. Man, it's rough. <laughs> it's rough. It's rough. When I transferred to AM, we had Christian Michael, five star from Beaumont, Ben Molina, a four star from uh, Dallas, Trey Williams, a five star from Houston, uh, Brandon Williams, another five star from Brooks Royal, and me, a three star from Texas Arcana. So when I transferred to Texas AM, I kind of landed in a loaded situation like, Golly, what did I get myself into? Like these guys are, the, but what I tell kids though, if you be patient and you work and you work at it, then it's gonna raise your level of play. You know what I mean? It's gonna raise your level of play, and eventually you're gonna be just as good as the other guys in the room or better, you know, or better. Cause man, like competition bring the best out you, bro. And that's why I feel like my development as a running back kind of went from like from even from being at Oregon in the room with the Michael James, Ken Young Borner, and DeAnthony Thomas and Lake Seastrong, all of us in the room at one time, all of us went to the NFL, bro. Like, you know yeah. what I mean? I, like all of us in the room at one time, bro, it's gonna raise your level of play. Like, okay, he do, he does this. And that's 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 kind of what my strength was. I was able to see like, okay, he does this coach like that about him. He like that, he like that. I'm gonna make sure I'm well around it, can do a little bit of everything in the room so if he needs somebody to depend on they're gonna say this is mr dependable because he can do everything yeah so, he's gonna, he gonna be able to run that he's gonna be able to yeah, do whatever he, yeah he, he can do whatever i took this from his game i took this from his game i'm gonna uh, be a competitor you know I'm, you just gotta take from the people in the room and like i said the, the more talent in the room is gonna raise your level of play and it's gonna make you a better player so yep, that's, end, and that's it, it yep and that's why uh, I, I'm not quick to tell kids to transfer out or if you ain't playing or whatever, man, give it a shot, man. Give it a shot. Compete and, and, and try to go get the spot. Not you playing. Know? But to me, not playing is, is not a reason to leave. No. no. Not no. playing is not a reason to leave. If no. Now, if, 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 now, if a coach that sat there and told you, hey, you will never play here, okay. That's, 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 that's different. That's different. That's, that's different. That's different. But not for playing sure. right now. No, it's not that's a reason. Not a reason to leave. That's not a reason. I transferred from Oregon and I played as a true freshman, but I was running to situations where I felt like it was just too far away from home. My folks could never come see me play. I'm like, I, I don't. And that, at the end of the day, that's who you do it for. You want to be able to play in front of your folks, and mm-hmm. you know. So right. I, I couldn't, I couldn't do that way out there, and I want to come back closer to home. So that's why I transferred. And that's another thing. Uh, that's another thing I want to talk about too, though. Um, it's just. It's situations too. I think a lot of kids these days jump out there at that first big D one or the biggest D one uh, mm-hmm. that they get, and then they end up, and that's why we see it so many kids in the portal. Or before there was a portal, we saw a lot of transfer because mm-hmm. you guys just jump out there to that biggest D one that had jumped on them, and now you stuck in a situation where you you number five or six coming in, and like he Trey just said, and three more coming in right behind you. Yeah, you can't do that, man. You can't do that. Yeah, that's why that's why you gotta do your homework. Like I said, look at that roster. See who on that roster already, because you better know the year before you sign, they probably sign another five star and he yep. just he red shirt and he's sitting on the bench. You don't even know him. You ain't see him on the visit. You don't you don't know him. They don't talk about him. But when you get in the room, he is good, he's just as good or better than you. Yep. And plus exactly. he, he probably already better than you because he knows the system. So exactly. yeah. And they and they're not gonna tell you about that kid. Hey, that know learn the system. Being able to pick up a playbook real quick, come on! That, that'll, see, that'll make a break a cat real. That'll quick. make that'll make them. Man, some of the most talented guys I was around, I, I end up starting over this guy. I'm a three star. He a five star. Uh, I end up starting over these kids not because they not they that because they were more talented than me, but I was able to pick up the playbook. I never messed up, you know. So that, that it, you got to be able to pick that playbook up. You hey, man, my my issue was. Eh, and I'm glad I did it at prep school and not when I got to Navy. I mean, I could not stay awake in that damn film room. 
Man, they, it's, bro, it's like so they cut the lights out. They, hey, they, whatever they, you need. You they cut the light. They cut the lights out. They turn the AC down just right, and I get. Mm. <laughs> mm. You sleep in there for that? Hey, I think for that real, is. for real. That's a real thing, bro. You better, you better, hey, better stand you gotta up. Know you, you got to know yourself. I'm going to stand up and go walk in the back of the room. I start drinking coffee. I eat sunflower <laughs> seeds. For real. Everything. Like, you ain't never seen so many sunflower seeds in your life. Man. You in there doing, doing this. I'm in there doing all kind of. Kind of <laughs> hey. Hey, bro. I'm telling you, man. Oh, but you got to, I feel like you also got to look at a kid's situation uh, from home. You know what I'm saying? If your situation is pretty cushiony at home, it's, it's going to be easy for you to bounce up out of a hard situation. So you probably, if you, mm-hmm. if you got a cushy situation at home, like you're not, football ain't your only way out. You was going to be at that school. Like we talked about, if you weren't playing mm-hmm. sports there, you wasn't going to be there. You was going to be at that school anyway. That's mm-hmm. your dream school. Your parents both went here. You, you mm-hmm. was going to, you know what I'm saying? You was going to be here anyway. Mm-hmm. That might not be the school you need to sign with uh, because it's going to be real easy for you to just throw mm-hmm. in the towel. Because okay. all this stuff we're talking about is going to hit you. It don't matter who you are. We didn't see the five-star come in. We didn't see the elites come in. We didn't see guys. You know, we didn't see it at all. When you get there, you're going to be hit with all this stuff we're talking about. So, mm-hmm. so picking a school is is, is, is so important. And I, I don't know how we can stress that enough. Hey, it's very important. I, and to the flip side of what you're saying, I just seen kids come from that cushiony situation and and it make them like not not have to worry about nothing else though. Like I'm locked in on football. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, here, yeah. I'm here. For, I'm here for football. I'm super oh, yeah. focused. Oh, I ain't worried about nothing. It go both yeah, ways. Yeah, yeah. You got some people that 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 that's going that's looking for that to fall back on, and you got some people looking at it. You, you just using it as security. Like hey, hey, I, I I know I'm straight. So all I'm doing is focus on football. I ain't worried about nothing. You know, yeah. so, for real, for real, bro. You see some of them kids come in, like, like we went to school with them. They come from a good home, and bro, they've been some kids be professionals when they when they freshmen in college. Like, kid, like a kid like Christian Kirk, he come in, he was a professional already, bro. He knew how to work out, knew how to take care of his body, he knew how to eat. He was a professional from day one. Yeah, like they ain't worried about nothing but football. You know what I mean? Parents, they was from Arizona. His parents flying into the game, so you know they got a little bread. But he, 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 he wasn't worried about nothing. He just, but, oh. but football, that's it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Everybody else worried about me. I need to send two hundred dollars home. My dudes, them, I got yeah. <laughs> You know how it is, but <laughs> for real. <laughs> but we always talk about it on this show. Uh, the common sense factor, man. We hate to see it. We see a lot of kids go off, and it's just like the common sense factor just don't be there. And it, it's always something just waiting out there in the wings and, and just grabbing by the foot, man. Uh, mm-hmm. What would you say? What would you say uh, to the kids out there getting ready to, to make that leap? Uh, just to leap to college? Yeah. Uh, man, at the end of the day, like we said earlier, college ain't for everybody. Uh, man, you just got to take it one day at a time. You know what I mean? Take it one day at a time. And, and, and write your own story. Write your own story. Your journey is not going to be the same as nobody else's journey. Take it a day at a time. You're the one who's going to have to be there and live there and go to school there, wherever you're going. You don't want, you the, you're the one that's going to have to deal with the situations. So be honest with yourself. You know if you can deal with not playing and sitting out. You know if you can deal with, you know, you know what you can deal with. Know yourself. So that's all I can tell. Know yourself and pray about it and Hey, and, and and know your academic level too, because don't oh, don't you better know that. Don't put yourself in no Ivy League school. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Man, don't I put yourself a... in no Ivy League school. And like, hey, I'm I'm here to play football. I'm goo, but school kicking your ass. Because I can hey, I better, can tell you, I went to Navy, that. and that first year they put me in electrical engineering. Mm-hmm. Oh, I, I can make a whole lot of money when I get out of school. Hey, I, I was I was in general studies. <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, cause, hey, for real, because hey, like you said, it's some, bro. It's 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 some majors you can't do and play football. Nope, you ain't gonna be no pre med major. Or, I mean, uh, un- unless you that dude, if you that dude on the field, and you can handle school, they they might coaches might make an exception for right, you. Right, right, right. Yeah, some of them you ain't gonna be able to. Yeah, some of them you ain't gonna be able to do and play football. Mm-hmm. Man, it's too I much time. 
Yeah, I think I made like a 22 on my ACT, so I made an all right score. It wasn't the best. It wasn't the worst. It was all right. But uh, Rice and Stanford told me they wanted me to take it again. Nah, I ain't, I ain't <laughs> hey, 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 it was, I 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 was, I'm good. I'm good. I, 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 that ain't good enough with a, a 3.9 GPA and a 20, I can't get in with that. I, so no, I'm good then. Yep. Some of these schools is not going to be football friendly too. That's what you also no. got to talk about. That's another yeah, question and, you got to ask. And, no, and them wasn't football family friendly though. The, the professors didn't like exactly. football players exactly. like that because they, you know, because some people done came in. You got some players come the in, and bad, they, yeah. they leave a bad taste in professors' mouth. So you can't you can't do nothing about this. This been in place before you even got there. It's gonna be in place mm-hmm. before you leave. I mean, yep. when you leave. So, so you're gonna run into situations where they don't like football players. Exactly, and the coaches are not gonna tell you that if you don't ask. That's not no, something yeah, they're gonna. gonna yeah, yeah, you better ask. You better ask. Yeah. You better be up front with them, man, because, look, I struggle a little bit academically. I need some help. Be honest. Tell them so they can get you get you right. Yeah. So they don't look at that transcript and tell anyway, so. Yeah, hey, but the, I feel like, I don't know, high school is so much it's so it's so much easier. It's so much not, it is. not no it work. Is. You, you right, you right. You it can, is. Know, it, you it can is. not study it. You can, you can almost not study at all in 3.0 high school either. Probably, yeah. yeah, yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And so if you don't go in there off the rip and tell yeah, me, man, coaches, especially these days with the no child left behind. Come on, man. <laughs> you can't even fail. You can't even fail for real. You can't hey, I mean, bro. Back in my day, if you didn't, if the paper was due on Wednesday <laughs> and you didn't turn it in, and you didn't turn it, yeah, back in my day, and you didn't turn it in Wednesday, that was zero player. Now you get to you get to a week before school done. You get to a week before school Ooh. done. And well, hey, you know, uh, you know. Mike, Michael, Michael got <laughs> Michael got 35 missing assignments. If he get them in, I'll grade them. You stand up all night, and then you didn't turn all of in. She just went through this mark 100, 100, 100, 100. 100. Now you, you went from a, a 1.5 GPA to a 4.0 overnight. No child left behind. The school system is messed up, man. Then the, the tru- they took the truancy out, so the parents not getting in trouble for the kids not going to school, so ain't nobody going to school anyway. I mean, what is going on? Exactly, and that all that the net you gotta have that you gonna have to have that school. And then I tell and I I tell kids this: if you go on if you going to college to play football, your senior year you you need to take classes. Like don't don't come don't just skate by your senior year in high school because then you are gonna get used to not going to class. And when you go to college, they're gonna slap you with these classes, and it's gonna feel like a wake up call. That's gonna be a hard. I'm hey. just telling from experience. I, I did this my senior year. I, I, I skated through. I had one or two classes in, in high school. I skated through. As soon as I got to Oregon, they slapped me with these classes. Then it felt like, it felt like I don't know. It just felt like a big slap in the face with the classes. Like man, oh man, what's going on? I gotta go to class. I gotta go to this. I wasn't used to it no more. So I tell parents and the kids like your senior year, don't skate through because you're gonna go to college. They're gonna slap load, you in these classes. Load them up. Just load them up. They're gonna load, ready, they're gonna load you up 16 credits, and, 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 and you ain't gonna be used to going to class no more. And you're setting yourself up for failure. I'm telling you. Yeah. Right now. I'm telling you. So, like, how, how you feel about these kids now? This new trend of for for going your senior year and just going straight to from junior year and going straight to college. Man, I don't believe in that, man. Cause them colleges ain't going nowhere. You know what I mean? Like, why would you do that? You going you gonna take away the Man, I'm glad I ain't skipped my senior year. I asked my, my mom, could I skip a uh, basketball season and try to enroll early, you know, in the spring of my senior year? But I'm glad she said no. I'm glad she said no. Cause, yeah. cause, I, I can agree with that. I can agree with that. Because yeah. I feel like if, if you or, the, you know, if you're one of them guys that you a big D1, that means you probably, well, not probably, you are the guy on your team. Mm-hmm. And if you leave, you just left a huge hole for that yeah, coach, man, you know, and your teammates. Leave your teammates behind. That's and could, you, and could you imagine going to college when you when you're 17 years old and and it's and it's a 22 year old. You know, like you play running back, you're 17. And it's a 22 year old man with two he's kids gonna tackle, and baby. He's, 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 gonna, he's gonna tackle you in spring football. Yeah, like bro, he he, he probably gonna hurt you. He playing because he out there for a whole different reason. Yeah, <laughs> he like, he gonna hurt you, bro. Probably gonna hurt you, man. He got that I, I think. 
and for me, I you know I play baseball too, so I I would have missed that whole I would miss that last mm-hmm. thing, and we ended up winning state that year. Uh, See what so I'm for saying? Me, yeah, for me, it, it was really like dang, good, you know, like good thing I didn't leave early or yeah. whatever. Uh, but then I also see a lot of good players that are in bad situations. You know what right. I'm saying? As far as you probably gonna get hurt your senior year, bad situation. You know what I'm saying? That's how much the team depending on you. Oh, uh, and 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 for that, but I don't think you should leave. I don't I don't know about leaving. I just think I don't know if sitting out well, might be worse to leave. This this what I say though. Uh, the game of football done changed so much, bro. Like it, when, when when I started playing, and probably when y'all started playing when we was kids, it was eye formation, ten people in the box, line up, hit you in the mouth the whole game. You got to be tough to play. You know, it ain't no crying wolf to wolf. Nowadays, bro, everybody running the spread. You're not probably gonna get hurt like that. Everybody <laughs> spreading you out, throwing the ball all over the field. The the game is looking more like a track meet. So. I tell kids, bro, like if you're scared of getting hurt, you don't need to play anyway. Cause mm-hmm. because this not even the same game that I grew up playing anyway. You know, it ain't 10 people at the line of scrimmage that's gonna do do this every play. You know, it ain't like that no more. So yeah. I, I you know, I, I don't even feel like they should do it if 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 if, if for injury reasons, you know what I'm saying? I don't even feel like they should do it for that. Yeah. Unless what you think about, what you think about, what you think? go ahead. The only way I would say a kid should leave. Is if the school that you're going to telling you you are a guy when you <laughs> you are the guy like yeah. when you get here you starting and and, yeah. that, and, and I mean and that's you I'm, I'm really talking for quarterback well, quarterback yeah quarterback. And, and I think like, quarterbacks you were, yeah yeah out. I think I I think quarterbacks should should like if you got a chance to be a starter right and after your senior year you want to leave and going into the spring early or or Maybe even your junior year. Who knows? I don't know. But I just think a 17-year-old kid ain't ready to be hit by them grown men in, in spring, mm-hmm. spring mm-hmm. football. Unless, yeah, it's, it's very expensive. That's one. Yeah, so yeah. Exceptions out there. Yeah. Right, right. right, right. Like yeah, yeah. David and Clowney coming out. Right, right, yeah, right, right. 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 But, but if you got a chance, yeah, if you got a chance to be a starter uh, going into spring football and you're going to leave early, that's fine, you know. But otherwise, don't do that, bro, just to be doing it because first impressions are everything. Because you're going to – I'm going to tell you how spring football goes. It's not it's not made to have freshmen there. So, they're not doing a whole bunch of walking through and showing you this and showing you that. They're not doing that because all the other freshmen going to come in the summer and then they're going to do that for fall camp. So, in the springtime, you just get through in the fire. First impressions are everything. They're going to see you and be like, uh – we don't know about him. Maybe he ain't he ain't ready. Then you get then they start to make plans to move on, cause like yeah, we human. Bro. Yeah, the coaches are human, bro. They gon they gonna see you in the mix of the other kids and be like, hey, he don't he don't really look that good, you know. Yeah, and and our real because you six yeah. two six two one sixty when you came in, he wasn't ready. Right, right. right. <laughs> and, when, and when you should have came in with the other freshmen and got. Two or three months of working out and training, and then they could have been like, okay, he better than not. They they could have weighed you up against the kids right. that you're supposed to come in with. So, exactly. so all that the tag, it's the tags they're gonna give you. It's the yeah, tag, bro. you know what I'm saying? It's, yeah. the tag it's gonna stick so with you, in. bro. Exactly. Yeah, yo, it's gonna stick with you. So you come in looking all skinny and and because the guy the speed of the game gonna be fast. It's gonna be way faster than you used to, and you're looking all slow, and they're gonna be like, man, he ain't, he ain't really, you know. That's first impression. My entire freshman year, all I knew is cause I was way undersized. I was two fifty when I walked in mm-hmm. playing nose. So I, I'm way undersized. My whole freshman year, all I knew is they like that I'm fast. So I'm just gonna run. And yeah. and, 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 I, and I, until I could get until I could get bigger, all yeah. I did was just run. I'm just gonna run. And anytime yeah. the ball way on the other side of the field, I'm gonna be. I'm gonna run over there. I'm, I'm gonna, gonna run, run over there. there. Yeah. <laughs> and that's and that's what I think. Uh, is another big slap in the face. Um, another big slap in the face to a lot of these players when they get there. Because when you're in high school, you can do everything. You might mm-hmm. play running back, D tackle, mm-hmm. wide receiver a little bit. You know what I'm saying? All that stuff. When you get it's there, and they they sign you as a linebacker. You are. That's what you. That, that's what you are. And you expected to be an elite linebacker. I don't care if you got good hands. Let me let me break. They don't, they don't care. And <laughs> let me break. Let me break. Let me break, <laughs> let me break this to them right quick. You are going to play special teams. Oh, yes, you're you gonna you gonna hey, that, hey, that, hey, that's how you make the bus sometimes. Yeah, hey, that's you how you going, make the bus. You're gonna, play, 
<laughs> you are going to play special teams. Let me tell you right now, if you are if you're a skill guy, you will be on kickoff, and you're going to be on kickoff return on that front line. You're not going to be the returner. No. Let me tell you that right there. You're not going to – you will not be the returner. You're going to be on kickoff, and you're going to be on kickoff return. You're going to be on punt and punt return. You will be a you will be a four a, a, a what they call it a four team a four team guy. That's what you will be. I'm telling you, boy. I, 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 I was I was a D lineman. I was a D lineman, and I got closer to the ball back there than anybody. Yeah, I came in with that was a steel guy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's the that. wall back there in the back. Hey. <laughs> Man, we had a running back. He told Coach, I ain't going to say his name, but he, when I was at AM, he said, hey, Coach, I'm a special player, but I don't play special teams. He said, boy, you would never play. <laughs> hey, he said, I'm a special player, but I don't play special teams. Man, boy, he your thinking, hey, and your, hey your, your freshman year, you get all the special teams ripped. Them old you guys ain't going to let you be in no, the back of the line. Hey, man. Like, you a teamer. <laughs> you a teamer. <laughs> Get up there. Yeah. I don't care if you ran down there six times on kickoff. Hey, you run down there seven. <laughs> you gonna play, yeah, you're going to play special teams. I don't care what you say. Uh, really, man. Uh, nowadays, we fall into this thing where we got all these different type of offers, which was not around uh, when we was coming through. You know, you either got – you had an offer or you did. You know, <laughs> we want you to come here or we don't want you. It. You know what I'm saying? Wasn't no, maybe we're gonna see, but you can put on your Twitter that you got an offer from here, or you know, you got an offer from here, but you can't commit you to it. An uncommittable offer. I, I, I hate that. What 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 where does this all come from? And what, I, what is this, man? I think it comes from people having buddies in high places that they can, yeah, it's a high if you put that out there, but we ain't gonna honor it though. So it, 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 you know what it really comes from, bro. Like, so I noticed when I was getting recruited. Uh, once you get an offer from one school, then it will open up the floodgates where you get an offer from more schools. Like I got offer, I got one Big Ten offer, and then like that following Monday, Tuesday, I had the whole Big Ten. Yeah. So, so I think it comes from that, like having somebody in a higher place over here saying that they offer a kid just to try to get the ball rolling on other schools. Mm-hmm. You know, that's that's what I think it really comes from, but. It ain't doing nothing but hurting these kids, bro. Because but when they see year to come, they trying to commit to one of these offers that they don't have. Exactly. And now they, they now now the community like, man, I thought that kid had this offer. I thought he was going this, doing that, and doing this. And our reality, he never had that. So never real. No, yeah, yeah, I, 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 I hate that. I always thought it was weird because even when, like when like when I was in school, you know, guys would get a letter in the mail and be like, oh, I mean, I got an offer from such and such, like. No, nah, hey, look, they don't offer through the mail, player. It's a phone call. <laughs> it's a phone call. Listen, back in the day, anybody can get on. You can go to the University of Arkansas page right now and fill up that questionnaire. And they're gonna mail you some. Two days they're gonna mail you a bunch, a bunch of shit. <laughs> they're gonna mail you some. They're gonna mail you some. <laughs> yeah, they're gonna mail you some, man. And they they used to have uh, so they call you and offer you, and then later on in the mail you would get an official offer letter in the mail, you know. And they 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 couldn't, from my understanding, I don't know if the rules changed. They couldn't do, they couldn't offer you officially until the start of your junior year. Yep. Mm-hmm. So I so, I, I don't know. And now they offer eighth graders. That's what I'm saying. But I, I think it's one. I think it's non-committable though. So is it is it still the same thing? They just saying it's an offer, but like I don't know. Exactly. But like here's my thing. What as a college coach. What do you look at? What do you see in the eighth grader where you say, yes, in the next five years, he's going to be good? A whole lot of shit can, can happen in five years. I mean, four years. The coach not even going to be there in five or four That's years. That's what I was just about to say. <laughs> so, 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 what so, college coach is planning for 2026 right now? Or, 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 and that's, or, that's what I'm saying. So the coach not even going to be there. <laughs> All the kids, all the kids that got offers from Arkansas last year, the year before, that was underclass for ninth grade, tenth grade, bro. That coach might not even be there in two years, bro. He might not be there next year. <laughs> so oh, now, and, and 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 that's the thing when you get recruited too. How long you gonna be your position? Yeah. Coach or how long you gonna be here? Because Thanks. I don't recruit me, and then I get there, and you gone. Yep. yep. Cause yep. that's what they're gonna. That's what they're gonna do. They're gonna bring in their own guys. Mm-hmm. 
They ain't looking mm-hmm. to replace you. Man, I never, I, I, true story, never spent a day on campus with the man that recruited me. See what I'm saying? Same never here. once. Never once spent a day on campus with the man that recruited me. He was gone before I even packed my bags and touched down. Before, before you touch down, you see what I'm saying? <laughs> That's how I go. The, the, the coaches that were recruiting me at a and when I was in high school, I went to Oregon. They left. <laughs> and then I was transferring the new coaches for recruiting me at a and So really? I would, if I would have went to a and they would have been gone. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> <laughs> that's another big question because I, I know for sure throughout my whole recruitment that was not a question I ever asked. Me you know neither. You just I think it's one of the things where you gotta check out the school record, like let okay, man, they 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 do kind of suck. What's going on? <laughs> hey coach, are you in the hot seat? Yeah, yeah. what's going on, coach? I, I noticed y'all was uh six and four. Uh are they thinking about getting rid of you or what? <laughs> they got a new direction coming in. Yeah, what are you going? So uh, you had the the coaching staff left before you came there, right? You didn't go through a coaching change or anything, did you? No, nah, no, nah, I never went through a coaching uh, change. Uh, but they the the new coaching staff came in, and I was transferring around the same time, and they just started recruiting me, and you know, and kind of brought me in with them. So I yeah. I can I kind of came in with the coaching staff. So I kind of seen how guys was acting though, like. Uh, and yeah. he ain't recruit me. Da, da, da. You know how they go. But. Yeah. yeah. So, hey, so I, I actually I went through a coaching change during the recruiting process. So Coach um, Coach Johnson at Navy recruited me, and then all of a sudden everything just stopped. And I watched. I'm watching TV, and he dipped and went to Georgia Tech. So in my head, I'm thinking, oh shit, he gonna take me to Georgia Tech with him. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And I, I called, and he was like, no, nah. he was, you know, you're still a, a Navy recruit. But I would call there and no one knew nothing. It was like, hey, we all recruiting and stop. So I'm like, well, shit, I'm going, I'm going to Army then. <laughs> I'm going to West Point. Yeah. And, and then it, it luckily ended up, they end up calling me and things worked out. But the, that's another thing. You got to know who going to be there. Who going to be there? Who going to be there? Who going to be there? That's dope. Yeah. That's, that's, that's crazy. Cause, and then also, what, I, that's, this was going to lead me to my next day, uh, statement. Was about if you are in school and the coaches leave, because I see a lot of guys sometimes they try to stick it out, like oh yeah this new coach like they might play defense or oh, this new coach a defensive coach, you know I'm, I'm a, you know I'm gonna stick it out here or whatever. You gotta go. <laughs> you gotta go. You gotta <laughs> I, when, when coach leave, you gotta get because because that that window that door that window open up when your coach leave you can you can transfer right out and, and play immediately. Because, because, like you, like I just said, they gonna bring in their guys, man. Yeah. Like you probably not gonna get a fresh shake. You been there, the the coaches, the new coach that come in, they feel like you've been here, and y'all was sorry, so you was part of the problem. <laughs> that's how they, that's how they look at it. Like, hey, we out. Hey, hey, yeah. hey, hey, coach, leave. I'm out. Hey, when June Jones, June Jones got fired, we got we got smacked by North Texas. Joe Jones gets fired. I'm, I'm in, I'm playing running back at the time, so we go through that season. No head coach. I'm playing running back. New coaching staff come in. I'm a D lineman on the roster though, but I'm playing running mm-hmm. back. New coaching staff come in. I'm at this point. I'm wearing like two two forty. You know what I'm saying? New coaching staff come in. They like you the nose. You a nose tackle two forty. I'm like, well, I, I was running back. They was like, you were running back at two forty. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm, yeah, a, yeah. I'm in a horrible. I'm, a, I'm positionless with a new coaching staff coming in. Man. You know what I'm saying? So that, that was a, that was a crazy lifestyle. Yeah. But you know what? You know, that, that, that's almost intriguing. You know, like if I'm the new coach and I got this kid that they say he a nose tackle, but on the roster say nose tackle at 240. When I talk to him, he say he a running back at 240. I'm, that's gonna make me want to see what he got, you know. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I, 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 I don't know, man. That's kind of they wanted, they wanted yeah. to see what I they wanted to see what I had that nose tackle. They ain't want to hear none of that running back. <laughs> 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 none of that running back. Uh, <laughs> is, that, is that when you broke your back? No, I, I broke my back my freshman. Oh, but no, they didn't want to hear none of that running back. They were man, like, oh, no, you gonna have to go ahead and get in the uh, cafeteria. Yeah. Yeah, you know, huh? Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you gotta make sure you know that that coaching staff gonna be there because the coaching staff 
change. It's a whole nother ball game. Uh, yeah. like we've seen it. We see it nowadays more than ever. Because it's yeah. almost like every year somebody get fired. You know yeah. what I'm like, it ain't no no if ands or buts about it, man. Uh, so that's another big thing. So you get recruited. Look at like like Troy just said. Look at that. Uh, look at that. Uh, that uh, that, that record. Yeah, look at that. Check that they record. Barely, out. They barely going bowling, or they ain't going bowling. Yeah. And they go bowling two years ago. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, is, is they falling off? What's yeah. going on? You coach on a five year contract and it's year three, and he ain't went bowling none of them three years. That fourth year, you on the hot seat, and that's the yeah. year you coming in. He out. He out. He might not make this, it to that. I saw this as a post too. You 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 really don't want to you really don't truly want to go to that school where you the last hope. Like they recruit you on the last hope. Because they're not gonna be there. Nope. <laughs> if it don't work out how they thought you was gonna come in and change the program, they're gonna be gone. And now you the quarterback they brought in or the running back mm-hmm. they brought in that are supposed mm-hmm. to change it, and it ain't changed. Like be like uh Ryan Mallett when uh rest in peace Mallet, be like him when he when he got to Michigan and they exactly. new new coach come in and they brought well, in the guy from West Virginia, didn't they? Rodriguez. Man, they went to uh spread offense and brought in Denard the Robinson, Denard Robinson or something. And that you know, Mallet pro style and Mallet like, hold on, I'm out. <laughs> For real. Tell you, he, he got recruited by um Carr. What was his name? The old guy that was at he was at Michigan forever. Okay, me Dude, the Daryl Harold Carr. Oh, no. But, okay, but they, yeah, he, they he probably, looked in, and then they brought in Rodriguez from West Virginia because he was balling down there, and see, then they went that that whole spread offense. See, like, and, and Bob Mallard and probably like you said on some awesome, uh, he gonna save our program because he was number probably I think he was number two or number one quarterback in the nation or something. So he was, going, he was going back and forth with Jimmy Clawson. See, mm-hmm. so that so see so they, thank they you, Eric brought in Lloyd Carr. That's what yeah, okay. I knew. I knew okay. it wanted. <laughs> yeah, they, they bring Mallard in, think he finna save the program, and I was next thing you know, he they he gone on it, but it, it all worked out for the best. Mallet, Mallet, I feel like he uh he was made to be in that Razorback uniform. Oh yeah, yeah. like oh, it, just, yeah. It, it look it look it it, it, it 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 that's where he was supposed to be. Man, exactly. some, hey, some guys are just made for programs. It just exactly. they, they get they get there and they fit like a glove just. Like a glove, bro. Like I, that's where he was supposed to be. I get so much hate on this on from this podcast and just my conversations out in the community. Whenever I'm saying, whenever I, whenever I put a school on a player, you know what yeah. I'm saying. No matter where they were getting recruited by or whoever they you know committed to or whatever, and I'm like, nah, you need to go over here. I get so yeah. much hate for that, but we all fit in somewhere. It don't matter. Yeah. What, you know what I'm saying. Sure. No matter what sure. type of caliber player you think you are, you are. We fit somewhere, man. Every mm-hmm. school is just not the same there. That's like I told I told I said system make players, bro. System make players. Like you 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 you, you fall into that right system and it feel like a glove and, and now now you get to you know ball out and be who you are. Exactly. <laughs> Got some bystanders over there. <laughs> <laughs> but no, uh, because you could be a, a player like we're talking about, like the undersized guy. There is a there's a place out there for undersized guys. It, you know what I'm saying? I swear, it's I swear it is. It's a place yeah. for undersized. It's a place for an oversized guy. If you're like if you're oversized at your position, it's somewhere out there for you. You know what I'm saying? I've seen so many receivers come in. We had a bunch of receivers coaches while I was there, but I seen so many receivers come in and they would be big. You know what I'm saying? They would be you know big old receivers, and a new coach would come in and he likes Cole Beasley. You know what I'm saying? Like the small city guy. But hey, go with that coach that just left. My boy, why would you not go with him? You know what yeah, that, that's why I said you gotta go with him. Exactly. And the guys who did ended up going to the NFL and you know what I'm saying? Stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Because they were bigger body receivers. And it's the offense for you out there. It is. It is. Go where you can play, man. Go go with go with what what fits your style, your body, your body size, your your skills. Go where you can play. Exactly, man, exactly. We've been talking about high school sports all night, uh, so it's only right that we talk about about, about the area real quick, man. What, what you've been seeing so far uh, out here in the area and, and who you think got the best chance to bring it home? Man, obviously, uh, PG and T High and even Arkansas High, they all they all been balling and racking, racking up 
a bunch of numbers and winning every week, bringing it in. I think Arkansas took took their first L. Was that their first L? Yeah, uh, first one. Okay, they took their first L this past uh, Friday, but they probably bounced back again this Friday with a win. But the boys bombing everybody in the city. We kind of struggling over there at LE right now, but it is what it is. See, I, I'm I'm from the school where I think Texas County football is good when, when everybody's good. Like I love when, it. When when when, Lip, when Lippie, I love balling. I feel like in everybody balling, it's just every the football. It just makes the, the town just just I don't I don't even know the words for it. Everybody just like it's a frenzy. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. Then, when, that, when Pleasant Grove play LE, it make them in that it game, make it better. It make it that much better when both teams are good, bro. Stadium in town that that could fit the amount of people that want to come to that game now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I just, man, I find joy in just seeing kids who want to be good make plays on Friday night. These kids, okay. some of these kids who really want it, and they 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 performing on Friday night. And they, I don't care what school you go to, that 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 bring that bring joy to be. You know, I just yep. uh, I was we had a session two Sundays ago with Borley, and you know where we was working out, and I just, but I just I have fun seeing kids that want to be good and they go perform on Friday night, it yeah, bring me joy. Most that's what I like. <laughs> I think that was my favorite way yet. That was, I think that was my favorite part about you know working at game day uh you know for as long as I did. Right. Because I was I was so in tune with it. Like now I gotta work to be in tune with it. I gotta right. you know what I'm saying I gotta try to okay who winning who doing this or whatever when I was doing right. it I was always there and just mm-hmm. seeing it and I think the past you know three years were some of the best you know what I'm saying football citywide uh, mm-hmm. You know that we didn't had around here in a long time, and uh, and, and uh, just like Troy said, I think it was a different type of city, man. It was just you know last season felt a lot different than it feel mm-hmm. right now. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Uh, and I think it also starts uh, when I, when I call it the Big Four. That's what we used to call it. When the Big Four balling, I think it keeps down the the chatter that I don't like. And so when I start hearing like like right now people saying like hooks, you know, could beat Le and and stuff mm-hmm. like that or whatever. Mm-hmm. It's, I, I feel like that game would be a no contest, no matter how down. Or yeah. Right, 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 you know? right. And, <laughs> I think it's, and and this is what I this is what I think, bro. Like, instead of uh, if I'm a player on, on on the team, instead of fighting it like this, I'm just gonna make, let my performance do the talking. You know what I mean? Like, I'm gonna go out Friday night, and I'm gonna. That's the that's the great thing about football, bro. Like you can say this and say that, but on Friday night when we put them cleats on, you got a chance to change the outcome of what people saying about you. Yep. You know what I mean? Yep. But but in, in in our reality, that starts on Monday preparation. You know, in, in practice. But I was just saying, like on Friday night, that's the that's the time you get to roll it out there and the world get to see what you did during the week to get better to change what everybody's saying. Too many people get in their feelings and get on their internet and worried about the internet instead of being boots on the ground and putting the work in nope. and letting that show on Friday night. Right. So quit doing all that all that internet <laughs> jet, hey, and, dude, I, 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 I I feed into it. Nick tell me man don't feed into it but I, I got to because <laughs> oh people, yeah no people say outlandish stuff like 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 he said oh, I bet hooks would take LE no it, it would it would ne- it would never happen LE could be 0 and 10 and hook and they would still put up 60 on hooks it just and, 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 they ain't and, happening but, but, but I will say this, Hooks. Hooks is one of those schools, bro. That they, they always got some athletes. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, like, always. Like, that's like, the thing. Like Hooks they run, the, the, the running back they got right now, uh, uh, Keyshawn Walls. Yeah. <sighs> bro, I, I, don't, I, I, I heard. I, I said he was the best. He was the best in Bowie County. Would you say that? I, I, that's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm, I'm almost ready to say it. Am I over, over, over ball? I can't go over ball. Man, this kid is having like 200 yards a game. He only playing two quarters. I, and, and, and I know people going to say he had hooks, but he treated it like, it, like it's what it is. Yeah, you he's supposed to be doing that. You can only play where you at. Who you yeah, play you against. Play where you at, yeah. And, 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 and I, man, that's one thing I hate about uh, uh, old heads there. They'll say – Oh, in my era, da, da, da. man, you can't control about who who you playing and when you playing or where you playing or who you playing against. You playing against who you playing against. That's it. I, what it look it. like? What it look like when it's I put on turn, uh, yeah. when I put on you, that Walls kid tape? He for real. <laughs> he for real. 
Yeah. If you playing, and, and I don't want to just keep saying hooks, and people think we bashing on. Yeah, yeah. If you play, if you're playing at a lower level school, yeah, and I you, know. And you, and, and, you, and you fighting for a book, a, a game at a running back, I don't want to hear what you're talking about. You yeah, know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. You, if you yeah. fighting for a book, but now you, you, we're talking about Terrence Ganaway numbers. Yeah, at that yeah. level. You know what I'm saying? I know. I know. You ain't gotta tell me you that man. I know. Yes. I see. It. I, I see what's going. Like, what's the kid name from Decab? I keep seeing him. Wiki Williams. I keep seeing him. I, I called five. you about him. I called you about him the other night. Didn't yep. You? Yeah, he keep having good. five or six touchdowns a game, man. I'm going to have to pull up and see and decap and see what's going on. I can't keep letting this pass by. Five touchdowns here, hey. six touchdowns here, 250 rushing yards. I'm going to have to see. Bro, ain't, but ain't that – that's like the, the the biggest pleasure of living in East Texas. You can hop on 30 and yep. go see good football anywhere, bro. It's, I can go check it out. Every, you can check it out. Bro, I can go like, check it out. It's, called, hey, it's hard. Saying. Slim Pickens up here, man. <laughs> Ooh. It's Slim Biggins up in South Dakota, man. <laughs> hey, good thing about it, though, you know, game day going to stream somebody. You can check somebody out. <laughs> exactly, right? <laughs> hey, just like you were just saying, though, like, Hooks is one of the things that's got, you know what I'm saying, they're always going to have a couple of answers. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It, it ain't, I don't think it's a team around here that ain't got somebody you're going to enjoy watching. Hey, you know real. what I'm saying? It, it's, just, it's just the area we live in. You know, it's like mm -hmm. we always say, it's a hotbed for athletes. Uh, multi sport athletes, you can see it. You can look at the college numbers, you can look at the pro numbers. This area is producing, uh, mm -hmm. every single year. You know what I'm saying? It's like it's like farmer's crop, we just keep coming back every year. You know what I'm saying? Somebody's gonna be good. Like, you got so many kids coming out of here right now, and they and we got so many kids coming up right now, uh, sophomores, juniors. You know what I'm saying? That's just that's yep. really on top of yep. the game. Uh, um, yep. in this area, man, you can go anywhere and watch. It. Yeah, T T I got a tandem of backs over there. Yeah, Javari Johnson and T Ball. Every week, I you know, every every week I'm I turn nails on and and, and, and Javari Johnson breaking for 70, 80. Another one. every every week. <laughs> another one. Bro, you could you could cut Texas High in half and start another school and that school would be dominant. Oh yeah, you yeah. take you know what I'm saying? Javari this way, he gonna rush for, for 1500, 2000 over here. T Ball, you're gonna do the same thing over here. It take TJ Gray, put him over here. I can take uh B Hall, put him over yeah, here. B Hall, put him <laughs> over here. The uh, the backup quarterback, put him over there. And the, the other one, up, yeah, they they, they you 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 about right, you about yeah. right about that. Yep, and that's why yeah. I think uh, that's why I think it's always been you know the Texas high, you know, no matter what people say, no matter how good your team ends up being. As far as got, they, they, you, don't get me wrong, like like I always say, you don't have your outlier, but they they. They you're in, you're out. They're gonna have they got more kids than you exactly. got, man. Yep. Exactly. So you, you just can't. I mean, even if you put up a fight, even if you can put up a fight for that first half, that second half, unless you just got some some dogs with that tank, you, you, you got that tank you gonna, on it. You're gonna have to score 70 in the first half to beat them. You have to throw a lot. You're gonna have to do something because they gonna they just like just like they let's say they start quarterback go down. The backup gonna kill you. Yeah, he got some too. Yeah. They just, they just got more. They just got more kids, bro. So I mean, you one of the smaller schools, you really just don't stand a chance. I ain't gonna lie to you. The folks yeah. gonna knock your head off. <laughs> hey, man. If you tuned into the podcast right now, you've been tuned in all night. We appreciate y'all for being here, man. Hit that like button. Hit that share button. Get this information out there for all the people to hear, man. Don't treat us like the side chick. Let everybody know what you're watching, where you're watching, and why you're watching it over here at the Read Talk of the Podcast. Also, get over there to the Instagram, at RTL Podcast, man. Give us a follow. YouTube channel, hit that subscribe button. Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Our Heart Radio. Y'all know what it is, man. We love y'all. Keep watching. Keep listening. Keep streaming. Uh, but we're going to get on down from this high school football real quick. And we got the 2% Creators Award again this week. Oh, yeah. Well, y'all keeping us up there in the top. We in the top two percent this week. Mm -hmm. uh, in Facebook, mm -hmm. Keeping us up there, you know, rising creators on the Facebook, man. We trying to get up there, but we ain't rising no more. You know what I'm saying? So y'all keep keep mm -hmm. doing what you're doing, man. Keep supporting the podcast. Uh, but last week we talked about the the running backs in the NFL, man. How was that last week we talked about this? No, two weeks ago. Two weeks ago we talked about the running backs in the NFL. The carries just stopped. It was like one week they just didn't give no running backs no carries. Like, 
guys that went crazy in week, you know, the first couple of weeks, they just got four carries, six carries, seven carries, stuff like that. Craziness in wake of all the running back controversy before the season started, man. You, know, you a former NFL running back. So I got it's only right to ask you what you think about all this stuff. Man, they need to pay them. <laughs> At the end of the day, they need to they need to pay them boys, man. Cause I mean NFL bro, the salary for a running back, it, it's just in a terrible state right now. But they need to pay them boys. You see what happened to Nick Chubb. That's mm-hmm. a sad situation, bro. And then everybody knows the game of football. If you got a good run game, then then it makes everything, everything else. Yeah, it makes everything else easier, man. Like it, you keep your defense off the field, control the clock, put your quarterback in favorable situations. So they need to pay them, bro. They need to pay them. They, uh, you know, that's that's what it, it, I think about it. it. It's almost like they're trying to devalue the running back. Like they're doing it purposefully. Like you know, some companies will tank their business mm-hmm. to lower their stock value. It's kind of like what the NFL doing. Like I, yo, yo, week one. He had, you know, 25 carries for 150, 175 yards. Hey, we need to, we need to pull, pull him back because at the end of the year, he's going to make him for some let money. Let me tell you something. Don't, don't think the owners ain't looking at that. Oh, I know. I know. I know. Don't, don't, I don't, think, they, hey, don't think they ain't looking at it. They're gonna, they're, they're, they'll check it out and be like, hey, man, well, I was playing for the Bengals. And, uh, man, I think A.J. Green, I think he started his career off with maybe like five or six thousand yard seasons in a row and I think he needed like maybe 18 yards or something to, to get another thousand and it was going to be like a seven or eight season in a row or something he was going to either tie the record or break the record or it was going to be something and uh he had, he hurt his hamstring so he rehabbed it rehab 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 for probably like five weeks he got back to full speed and we was playing against the Houston Texans it was like the last uh game of the season uh, we in the meeting, we in meetings, and the owner would walk down and call them out and uh, didn't didn't let them play in their game. Like, told him, told him he wasn't playing. Like, hey, AJ not playing today. Like, bro, why would, like, is it? He, he you, only need 18 yards? Bro, he don't need 18 yards, bro. You sleep. He don't need 18 yards. This man just been rehabbing his hamstring. He didn't got back to full speed. He need 18 yards to get 1,000 yards or something. Like, I was like, bro, so they really going to – like, so I said all that to say, the owners, they they are aware to what's going on. I've heard uh, Hall of Fame running backs say that they needed maybe like 50 yards or something, and the owner come down out the box and be like, hey, take him out, well, you know, because he, he got an incentive to say if he get a certain amount of yards that we got to pay him this and that, you know. Them, mm-hmm. them folks are aware of that bread. They know. They, they, <laughs> they, they, they count them chips. Yeah, they count yeah, them chips. They, they, they aware. For sure. Hey, hey, if they if they could have stopped my boy from getting his three picks in that first game, they stopped Tim Westbrook. Hey, come, on. Hey, come on, man. Ain't no know way. That. When he got that second one, they was like, oh, show up now. Well, yeah, <laughs> they, hey, if they could have stopped him, they would have. <laughs> For sure. Hey, man, buddy hit his incentive week one, baby. Week one, <laughs> man. He ready, he, ready, he ready to say, y'all can catch me today. Right? Shoot me on, <laughs> Shoot me on man. Yeah, hey, and it was funny because I was watching the game, and when he got that that third pick, bro, that celebration you've seen a little bit too extra. I'm like, <laughs> he knew. I said, he, knew. And he hit something. He he just got he he got a bonus or something. <laughs> yeah, he knew what was up, man. He knew what was up. That's um, funny. But yeah, I feel like they're trying to devalue the running back even more than they already have in like the past five years. Uh, yeah, he just man. going down and down and down and down. Um, but I I think. I, I think the only way that the running backs come back, and we talked about this a couple of weeks ago, is that they have to become superstars now. You know, you, if you're a running back, you're going to have to do a little bit more than just football uh, to, to get that check. Man, you, really you know what, though? It's, 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 it's too easy to find them, bro. Exactly. That's another thing, too. It's like just from just from playing devil's advocate and looking at it from the other, other view, it's too easy to find them, and then like when you run them into it, you run them, you run them. They gonna get hurt. Bring another one in. He gonna he gonna be running the ball just as good as that one. So, like, do you really pay him? I mean, if, I mean, you know what I'm saying? like that's what I'm saying. As a, as, a, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a businessman, do you really pay him? You know what no, I'm saying? Because no, no. if you look at it, it's, it's supply and demand, and if in this, if the supply is super high, 
the demand goes down. I can run you to the ground. Oh, you tore ACL. You gone. I can go pay, pick up this guy. I can go pick up this guy, this guy. Bring him in. Try him out. Oh, that three didn't work. Ship him out. Bring in three more. Because it, it, hey. it's, it's, I don't know the exact number, but I'm sure there is a, a list of guys just waiting in the wing. A super list. Yeah. Wait, super wait, list. Wait, waiting on the phone call. And we used, I think Tuesday was, was our off days. So I used to go in and kind of get a little pump in, a little workout, do some recovery. And I also used to look in that in that back locker room to see what guys they done brought in to work out too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They, they done brought 15 running backs in here. Somebody ain't doing their job. And I ain't even know it was this many people on the street. Yeah. I ain't know if it was this many free agents, but that's just how it go. You got to think of all the undrafted guys, all the veterans that got cut. You know, all, it, it's bro, so many running backs on the street. You can just find them anywhere, bro. And it's and it's running back. You play running back like it's one of the most instinctive positions. Like you just hand them the ball and let's see what he can do. Either he can do some or he can't. And we we'll find another one. Yep. yep. And they Take got. It's, it's, it's so many people. Like, I, we talk about this all the time, too. I think basketball might have it. Uh, but football, man, it's just one of them games. Where, like, once, you, once you've reached a certain level in it, it's hard. To, it's, hard to, it's hard to say, all right, it's over with. Oh, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Basketball might be, the wor- might be the worst just because you can play it anywhere. You can go outside. I can go tomorrow and go find a gym. Yeah. They're going to be playing basketball in there. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You just can't go find no field for the cats with them pads on. No, like, hey, I, I, ain't gonna I, have, I mean, you can, but it ain't going to be no football you want to play. <laughs> right. I, I, didn't I, play. Can play. I, didn't, I didn't play in a few of them leagues. It ain't something you don't want to play. I can guarantee you I didn't play my last snap. Oh, yeah. I, for the rest of my life, I will never play football again. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I can't I can't say the same about basketball. Ain't nothing. You know what I mean? Like you said, it's just it's just the, the difference in sports. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, they they yeah. play. They playing basketball on every corner. Exactly. And I think that's uh so that's what keeps basketball up top. But other than that, football is right underneath it and all them I mean, they just waiting on that call. Mm-hmm. They just waiting on the call. So it, it's gonna be hard for the running backs to get paid, and that's why I think running backs are gonna have to start making themselves yeah. superstars to and, where you know. And you gotta be like, uh, if you look at the last guys to really get paid, right? Well, I think Zeke got paid, but besides him, McCaffrey, uh, Ty Gurley, the guys who really got paid, they they do more than just run the ball. These guys have. 1,000, 1,200 rushing yards and like eight or 900 receiving yards. Yeah. So in order to get paid as a running back, bro, you got to be a real weapon. You can't just be a running back. You got to be an offensive weapon. I think Kamara got, get, uh, got paid too, didn't he? Maybe he yeah, got paid. Kamara got paid a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so you got to be a weapon, bro. You can't just be a running back or you, or, or you, you, you ain't going to get paid. Yeah. And that's why you, we saw the Saquon deal go the way it did. Um, yep, because he's he's more of a Saquon. And don't get me wrong, Saquon can do some explosive stuff in the passing game, but he's not going to bring you 800, 900 receiving yards. No. He he's not going to do me. that. Yeah, give it to me back. So Yeah, he'll give it to me back. And McCaffrey going to bring in you. He going to have you 12, 1,300 rushing. He going to have you 750 to 1,000 receiving. Yep. So they're going to they gonna pay him. They gonna get paid. Exactly, and we see same thing with uh, Bell. Like the Pittsburgh tried to pay Le'Veon Bell before he went out on his rock. He he came out and said he should have took that deal. I know it. I know nope. he should. <laughs> yeah, I know. It. <laughs> but but he was rushing for thirteen hundred, having eight eight or nine hundred receiving yards. So when once you become a, a weapon like those guys and Gurley, Gurley did the same thing. He got paid. Once you become a weapon, you'll get paid. But once you once you one of them guys that. They know. They know. Eventually, Derrick Henry is gonna slow down, bro. You gonna break down. That. You, that, 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 run, that running style is not sustainable. It is not. Yeah. A, it's not a longevity yeah. thing. You doing number handing it to him. He's gonna break down eventually. You gonna have you to. Gotta be. You gotta be. I think that to me, the next superstar back that nobody's talking about right now is probably gonna be uh, a chain down there in Miami. He had two hundred yards two weeks ago, and then last week he had ten carries for hundred yards. So he got back to back uh weeks with a hundred over hundred yards on the ground. But he he's one of those backs that they can hand it to him and they can throw it to him. Yeah, so I think it's him. him and B John. B John too. B-John the league, too sure. the league gonna make B John a star. I see B-John. it happening right now. 
Beach Young gonna be a star. He he's already a star. He, yeah. With the plays he making already, I ain't even count him because he to me he's already. You know when you when you get drafted number four overall, whatever pick he was, they already know what he gonna be. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> they already know. Yeah, they doing it for Beach Young. Uh, flip it over to the basketball world, man. We talked about um, LeBron saying, hey, young books ain't getting it done. Forget it. I'm coming back. I'm, I'm playing in the Olympics 2024. Yeah. Uh, you know, everybody at the media kind of bashed them for that the young guys play, you don't know all this stuff or whatever. Um, but now you see KD and Steph Curry say, hey, go ahead and lock me in too. Uh, right. So so what you think about that? I think it's one of those things where it's like uh, – uh, man, the more is hearing that outside chatter, like the world saying, oh, the world done caught up with us and basketball, da, 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 da. but mm-hmm. in real life, the, the best players not playing. You know what I mean? Exactly. They letting the young, they've been letting the youngsters play, so uh, they've been taking, taking some lumps on the chin, and I think they just tired of hearing the outside noise for the most part. So they just like, all right, the best players going to play now. Yeah, because I, I was one of them because when we got beat by Czechoslovakia, I'm like, how we get beat by Czechoslovakia? I didn't even play basketball over there. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. Because you got you got Curry and Brun and all these other cats at home watching it, KD watching it. So right. they, they should be out there playing instead, you know. But and I think the more. You got you when you really break it down, I think a lot of people don't ever take all the variables into any situation. But when you really break it down, all those cats that's playing professionally overseas and other things like that, they've been playing pro since they was 15, 16 mm-hmm. years yep. old playing professional basketball. We're sending rookies and, and second-year cats. Yeah. And you know what I'm that. So that ain't, that ain't going to never get it done, man. That ain't going to never get it done. No. So. But, yeah, man, uh, we appreciate you for coming through tonight. You know what I'm saying? Had to get that. Had to get that episode in. Had to get. Oh yeah, that, for that, sure. You know, I feel like some valuable knowledge. You know, out to the community. Uh, hey, so hey, Trey, have you ever thought about hosting like a, a, a in person seminar to talk about recruiting? Because that's something me and Nick had talked about like years ago. Like we've never really had anybody in the area host like a recruiting roundup. Like um, when I was coming through, we would go to Dallas. And go to the Randy Rogers recruiting roundup, mm-hmm. and I don't know. I don't know if they did they have that when you came through Randy Rogers. Man, I, I, I it sounds so for me. I, I want to say they had to have it, bro. Because Randy, he was he was uncut. Like he yeah. he he tell he look look at, look you up and down. You ain't D one material player. You need yeah. to look at. <laughs> and that's, and people, that's, people would leave hurt. That people be crying like, but he told you the real. Man, and I feel, yeah. and I, like, at the end of the day, that's what you need to hear, man. You can't beat that. Can't, you yep. can't beat that. He tell you he say if, if a D one ain't 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 called you by the end of your senior football season, it it's probably over. ain't coming. It probably ain't coming. So, and that's man, and, and I know we're gonna wrap it up, but that's that's another thing, man. I was telling people like, you know, you you a senior and you ain't got no calls yet from them D one schools, man. These days you can't you can't SFA and and Sam Houston and those schools like that not gonna come in calling late. Cause they 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 getting the they getting the bottom of the barrel uh, uh, portal guys, so you you you're not gonna you're not if they ain't calling you, you know, and you ain't getting recruited by them big schools, then you might want to look into going to a junior college so you can get your chance to get recruit give yourself a chance to get recruited and go D one again versus going and signing with Henderson State where you committed for where you gonna be where you gonna be there for versus signing with uh, a four year university. What ties you down for four years? So if you want to, if you feel like I didn't get recruited how I, I should, then you probably want to look into going to a junior college and give yourself another chance and go on D one. Especially if you're going into your senior year, like I said. And, and don't get me wrong, I, it, you know things happen. They might come out of the blue and offer you. You know, you might see your senior tape and somebody might come in and offer you. But at the same time, if they ain't call you by your senior year, they ain't calling and knocking your door down. Then. You know, I wouldn't tie myself down to a four-year university if I felt like I was a D1 kid. Yep, exactly. Especially on the coming in on the late on the late end, because right. it don't matter what school it is. It's like we said, it's a business. Yep. What business do you know that hadn't already planned for next year? It you know what I'm saying? They, you, they already been planned for next year, so if they hadn't talked to you in none of this time, you you're not in the plan. 
You know right. what I mean? And so even right. if you find a four-year university that will take you, that's what they're doing. They just take you. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? They accept you. They're not inviting you to come in. Right. Uh, now, now you ain't got a choice. You you a receiver. You came in. They they signed eight or nine receivers, and, and, and you the tenth one. And you know what I mean? You just put yourself behind the eight ball. And that walk on life is it's it, it, it's it's a hard, it's hard living, man. I ain't never had to do it, but I just watch a whole lot of cats go through it. I'm like, hey, I don't want to be no part of that. Uh, you don't want you don't want that. You you quit. Yeah, you don't you don't want no part of that walk on life. <laughs> but like I said, we appreciate you coming on, man, and put that knowledge out there uh, and kicking it with us tonight on the RTL podcast. Uh, my favorite segment of the show, right here, man. It's called Mental Health Checks. Uh, I stole it from Brandon Marshall and all them cats over there on the uh, I Am Athlete podcast. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I got to know, one through ten, man, how you doing? Personally, you know, what's going on with you? Physically, you taking care of yourself, and then business-wise, what you got coming up next? Uh, man, uh, personally, you said everything is good. Me and my, my, my family is good. Me and my wife, my kids, everything is good. Uh, what you said after that physical? Yeah. Oh yeah, everything's good. I'm 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 as good as I'm gonna be. You know, after you play as long as I play, I ain't play as long as some many, uh, as many people, but I played a while. I'm about as good as I'm gonna be. I go, I'm gonna go see the chiropractor probably, uh, maybe next week sometime. But I'm good. And uh, business wise, just finna uh, winter time coming. About to roll some more big pressure jumpsuits out, and that's just about it, man. That's about it. Right. How, how the book? How the book doing? How the people? You know, what's the reception on the book? Man, it was good. Man, everybody who read it, uh, you know, I, I forgot to mention that, but everybody who read it said it was good. They enjoyed it and gave it some positive feedback on it. So it's called Rising Above the Rivals, man. It's just uh, about being a competitor. And if you ain't got it, go check it out on Amazon. You can get it, order it, they send it to your front door, and read it. It's a short read. It's an easy read. It's just about being a competitor and, you know, how, and uh, the second half of it is about how that translate to the real world, like how, how, how being a competitor can help you in the, in the workforce. So already. Well, it's definitely, man. I, I, I picked it up as soon as I sent you a drop in. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, we always, I was here, you know, TK support TK. And I, yep. try, I, I try my hardest, you know what I'm saying, to really live by that and really get out there and support everybody who's doing it. Uh, right. especially, I get to do it a lot with the video stuff, so I get to get out there and help some people out and stuff like that. But yeah, when I seen you drop that, I was like, "That's major." Uh, yeah, man. You know, yeah, that was, that was that was that was good, man. Like I, I uh, at some point, I want to try to get it in, uh, you know, uh, one of those major bookstores. So I'm gonna keep on looking into it and seeing what I got to do, take the necessary steps to, you know, get it into a major bookstore. So, yep. Most definitely, man. That's what we want to hear, Trey. What you got for me? I uh, personally, man, you know, life is good. Been getting the house back together, getting windows fixed and doors and stuff all fixed and painted up. You know what I'm saying? And hopefully, here in the next, you know, couple weeks, I'll be knowing if I'll be either moving back home or staying where I'm at. Um, so just, you know, waiting on that phone call. Um, so business wise, I mean, personally, I'm sitting at about a about an eight right now. Basically, man, I'm I ain't gonna lie to you. I'm hurting. I'm doing this 90 day cleanse transformation been in the gym every morning at uh, five o'clock then getting off work hitting the gym again getting the cardio in so right now and yesterday was leg day so my legs are feeling like jello so <laughs> basically i'm feeling about a seven right now but like trey i'll be going to the chiropractor tomorrow get all popped and popped out <laughs> yeah hey, hey, that time man, i like right there hey, you, hey, i know right hey don't take it for granted man hey you hey we get one body you better take care of it like how you do it you know what i'm saying so basically, like I said, I'm about a seven. And then business-wise, man, it's hunt season. Got a ton of content coming out. I'm talking to a guy about, you know, helping me film my hunts. So he's going to teach me what I need to do, and I'm going to start doing that. So I'll, I'll probably be going down in the woods probably next week. Um, the, the weather's starting to cool down, so I'm going to get out in the tree. Um, had a great show with Joe Gabo last weekend. I got people hitting me up saying, hey, bro, go ahead and drop it. Like what we we didn't call it up to everything. Go ahead and drop it. Mm. But <laughs> but but talking to Joe, Joe's like, bro, we we can't drop it till Friday, cause he cause he dropped some big news in there. So, you know, what I'm saying I'm gonna be dropping that episode. Uh, I got Gary Newberg agreed to be on the podcast. He's you know the Elk Whisper, 
dude is just an amazing elk hunter. Been doing it for the last 30, 40 years. So I can't wait to talk to him. And um, the South Dakota Bow Hunter Association booked me for their uh, their was it their seminar. So I'll be you know doing a podcast there and then you know giving a lecture about you know hunting and social media and all that. So it's gonna be super exciting. So business wise, I'm about a nine man. Green arrows going up. Most definitely, man. Gotta love it. Gotta love it. Uh, myself, personally, man, everything's good. Uh, just get back into the, you know, the swing of real life. I feel like I'm still in vacation mode a little bit, but uh, I'm trying to swing back in there, man. So uh, everything's on point. Kids good, wife good, everything good. Uh, so I give myself a nine right there. Green arrow is going up. Uh, physically, man, I feel good right now. It's coming up to the end of my season, man. The summer is my favorite season when it's hot you know what I'm saying I want I like being I want to get out there in it I can't stand the cold it was cold a little bit of rainy today I did not leave the house <laughs> you know what I'm saying straight edit mode all day long I can't stand it uh, so I will be giving me a big pressure jump so I can't stand me <laughs> you know so uh, I'm uh I'm all good physically but I give myself about an eight right there and then business wise man I can't complain uh just got to do the Jaden Hill event down there at Ashdown this weekend um, for Decker Sports down there, man. Took some pictures and video, just getting all that stuff edited up. Loved it. They loved it. Uh, we going back and forth on ideas and exchanging and stuff like that. That's my favorite type of work. So everything going good right there. Uh, the RTL podcast, you know, tonight we put on another, you know, fire episode for the, for the fans out there, for the listeners. Uh, Dreaded Archer, anytime you do something big, you know what I'm saying, uh, that's always big for me too. Uh, Instagram numbers, you know, we get that on the, on the collaborations. So they're going crazy right now. Can't complain on nothing business wise uh, except, hey, book me more. I, I don't care. <laughs> I don't care how many. I double book all day, every day. I do it. Uh, so, <laughs> hey, as long as I keep getting phone calls, and text messages, and getting booked up, man, we're gonna be good. So, I'm gonna give business right now a ten, man. Green Arrow still going up. Uh, Right there, man. Before we get off here, y'all got any last words for the people? Hey, man. Like, it, it, we, we are now in the, the last quarter of the year, so if you got something that you've been wanting to do, start it now. That way, when you roll into January, the new year, you already hit the ground running. Yep. Yep. What you got, Trey? Man, nothing, nothing man. Just take it one day at a time. Like you said, we're in the last quarter, so... You know, some people like to shut it down in their last quarter, but me, I like to turn it up so I can, turn it up. you know, <laughs> got hey, to. roll into <laughs> that new year. So keep going, keep going. Hey, also, where can where uh, people want to get some big pressure, man? Where can they find you? At? Man, bigpressureclothing.com. You know, uh, you can go to the website or you can follow the Facebook page. We're gonna have uh, new stuff dropping here pretty soon, so be on the lookout for it. Hey, man, exactly, when man. you drop that new stuff, make sure you get some. Some Colorado black and gold because I'll be going back to Boulder. I'm going to be rocking the <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, got yes, to. Sir. Got to, man. Y'all make sure y'all get over there. Big pressure clothing, man. Get it. Buy it. Hey, show your friends. I'm telling you, y'all see the hat right there. It's lit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thing. I need the bear logo. You know, that's my favorite logo. He <laughs> said on the side right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah, you yeah. Gotta, yeah, you got to get it. Got to get the big pressure, man. Hey. Everybody stay on the lookout. All the big pressure clothing dropping, man. Stay on the lookout for the RTL podcast on Instagram, Facebook, uh, YouTube, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Apple Podcasts. Anywhere you can get a podcast, you can get this one. And uh, we just be out here cutting up and having a good time, man. Um, My last words, man, y'all stay vigilant. Y'all see around here, especially this area, we have a few people going missing right now, man. Hey, I don't know what the cause of it is, but you don't want to be the next one. So, hey. Just hey, stay vigilant. When you see that man on aisle six or aisle five, you shouldn't see him on aisle three and two. And you yeah. se- definitely shouldn't see him back there when you get in the parking lot, man. So keep keep it on you. Exactly. <laughs> hey, gotta have yours on you because I'm so <laughs> gonna have mine on me, man. <laughs> With all that being said, you better do it. <laughs> hey, this is season five, episode 39 of the Reed Talking List Podcast. I'm your host, Nick Reed, along with my brother and co-host Trey Reed. Trey Carson, special guest tonight. We are out. Peace. Yeah. 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 What? I mean, it's been turning on with her. The girl around us and she loving her. If we don't know you, don't go close to her. If 
you with your